Good morning, people. Oh, I feel like I'm echoing. Morning, people. Happy New Week and all that great goodness and great stuff. Welcome to TDA, the day after, your favorite news platform and the home of popular culture as defined by the culture. And I am one of your lovely hosts for today, my own royalty. And they call me E-Man, the pro-black activist, TDA producer and news analyst, Melanin Jam Packed. That is right. Good morning, Brent. Are you here with us? It's just so nice, Mike. Morning, morning. How are you? Love that. I'm um, okay, thank you. I'm not sure if I can hear you in the mic, Brent. Brent is just um getting himself situated. What a kind man. He focuses on everyone else's cameras and everyone else's mics. He gets mm-hmm. himself. Very selfless. Very selfless. It's the kind of man you want to be with. Mm. <laughs> Look, you can submit your applications through me. There's an application for you, obviously. <laughs> how the hell would I? How Ooh. the hell would I benefit from it? And there'll be no nepotism. There might be some nepotism. <laughs> <laughs> there will 100 percent be some nepotism. <laughs> if I know you to be a witch. Oh yeah, for real. Ain't getting close, my brother. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Brenda, are you here now? I am. I think. Good. Are you there? <laughs> you still there? One two, one two, one two, one two, one two, one 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 two, one two. I think so. All right. Good morning. <laughs> Charles Mack. Good morning, G Fats. Is that Mark from the Spotify Mark? Mack. Oh, my bad. <laughs> That's how Nigerians will say my name is not do that. That's how you'll say Mark? No, it's not. <laughs> it's Mac. not, it's not, it's not. <laughs> Hello, Mack. <laughs> All right, J Fats. Don't run with it. <laughs> <laughs> Ramsey ZZ's brother. Big up Ramsey. Big up Ramsey. Uh, good morning, Timmy, King of BOE. Good morning, Christy. Is Timmy King of BOE? He always um says hi just before Christy, so it's the position in. This I was gonna say like chat. he never, he never was king of BA. I always saw Timmy. Mm. It's changed. Yeah, but you can't change <laughs> two years after into the show. Don't try copy Christy's flow. <laughs> Plagiarism. But Christy is no. She's just a spanner. She she doesn't have the title next to her, so I don't know if it is. It counts. The spanner does what it needs to do. Everyone knows Christy's BOE. Mm. You say B O E, I think Christy. Fair enough. So she don't need to tell people anymore. We know what it is. It's a, if you know, you know, and everyone does know. So she's even trademarked it. <laughs> well, <laughs> there you have it. She means serious business. Big up, Christy. Good morning, Everest. Good morning, Nightfall. Good morning, Fernand. Good morning, Inni Snow Globe. Good morning, Crucial J. Good morning, David N. L. Good morning, Tracy. And that is it so far. Love that. How was the weekend? It was alright. It was just a chilled weekend. I like a chilled weekend these days. Mm. Yeah, that's just my vibe, to be honest. Mm. If I ask you to to go to something next weekend, Saturday, 3 p.m., and me not telling you what it is, but it has something to do with one of the people on the campaign, would you be interested? Isn't this Saturday coming? This Saturday coming. Dun, dun, dun. It's very awkward because I've got brunch planned. Brunch? Punch yes. him. <laughs> <laughs> My first is, I'm cutting the ribbon for the run season this Saturday. So, um, okay, fair enough. It's exactly the at first, that time. first brunch of the spring? Yes, actually. It's actually my first brunch of the year. Mm. Yeah, but I don't, I'm not brunching often like that anymore. Well, <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's just that. Let me know who that is there. I mean, I still can't make because obviously I can't let the girls down, but. Mm. You can't um, even try. I can't. <laughs> I don't, I don't operate like that. <laughs> I said if I try, you know, <laughs> kind of. No, 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 I don't. When I commit to something, I'm committed to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Ladies, yeah. take note. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to know you're taking that, but that's all right. Uh, good yeah. morning, Vaughn. Good morning, Maggie. And why is Brent chatting my business? What business? Uh, Christy, you told you did tell her business. What was when it? you said what she did. I mean, she don't actually, say it again. <laughs> How can someone say you just chat their business and you're going to repeat the business to prove you didn't chat the business in the first place? Yo, to be honest. <laughs> chatting twice. To be honest, I'm just proclaiming stuff, in it. I don't know. She's now legitimized it by actually saying, oh, that's what I was doing. And if you, that's, Unagi, a, that's an man. art, you know. Unagi. It's an art, yeah. <laughs> someone revealing your secret and you not adding more fuel to it. Like, not drawing attention to it. But anyway, Christy will give you a pep in your step to do what you need to do with it. So, sometimes that's the motivation you need. That's the motivation you need. 
Good morning to Joe K. Good morning, Dr. Amani. Good morning, T. Good morning, OMB. Boom, boom, boom. Good morning, y'all. I want to hear this boy's uh, recap of Sunday, man. Yeah, did you go? No. Why didn't you go? Actually, you, let me not say that. Do you know I didn't how go. much crap I have to do? Yeah, I didn't go either. <laughs> Crazy how much crap oh, I have to so do. Good. I even, I even, um, I didn't have much sleep over the weekend. That's to show you how much crap I have to do. Why are you calling it crap? Or you mean like how much stuff you have to do? Yes. Okay, I hear you. Hella stuff. I hear you. Hella stuff. And I don't even know if it is that this boy would have um had a VIP. Um, it's Box Park. No VIP. No, I, I need somebody to meet me by the... Course. You're such a VIP. Like, you're worse with the VIP Tell stuff, you know, than school, Mugs. You know. <laughs> no, but you're, the, you're actually worse than Mugs. <laughs> no, I'm not. You are. I'm not. Do you know, I knew you, you were, how you were? Gina's first event year, obviously, we all had VIP. This crook had a different, like, it wasn't even, it's not another level of VIP. Mm. It's just an all access. So he could be backstage. <laughs> just yep. He's out here flexing on me. I looked at him like, first of all, I gave myself five of those if I wanted to. He's <laughs> <laughs> calm down. So you're worse than mugs. You're that's, absolutely worse than mugs. That's because I saw, um, it's so weird for me to say Beverly's husband. So Isaac. Because Beverly's my first um, introduction to that particular union, isn't it? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And but big up Isaac there. Yeah. Every time. Name, his name is Isaac. Yeah. But um, I like seeing Beverly's husband because that's how it should be, to be honest. Do you know what, fair? Yeah. In the world of it, call opportunities and that. I met him after. Do you know what I'm Fair. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, he sorted me out with the, the ticket. Yeah, he would have sorted me out too, but he was yeah. out here flexing on people. And I was just thinking, I wasn't like, flexing. I thought, I thought <laughs> everybody, <laughs> everybody who looked like me had one. Who's everyone that looked like you? Man, it's a VIP, isn't it? My friend, put your wrist down. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> annoying. <laughs> but no, I, I, my cousin actually went as well. Because my other cousin does mm. pen game, F-Don. Oh, dope. So her, his sister... Don't just brush over that, please, Esther. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you know F-Don is one of the sickest barers there, Emmanuel? No, I didn't know, man. F-Don right. is, he's proper sick. Serious. Proper you, sick, you know, you know, okay, okay. You know old school battle rap mm. in America? Mm. And you had that um, flamboyant fella. I can't remember what his name is. The one who was the OG OG. And when it is that he would put on a performance, he would put on a performance. I'm trying to think. Remember who I'm talking about? Loaded Lux. Loaded Lux? Is it Loaded Lux? You're talking about? Is it Loaded Lux? And you see his face. Murder Mook? No, nah, no, nah, I'm not talking about Murder Mook. Okay. Loaded Lux, when he had that battle with um, Calico. Yes, and this, this is the guy. This Loaded Lux guy? Yeah, yeah. This fella? Huh? Loaded Lux, yeah. yeah I yeah, can't yeah, see yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Let, me okay, just, cool. let, me just, let me just put him up. This fella. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know when it is that he comes to this stage, it kind of looks like um see here, isn't it? This one here. Oh, I see what yeah, that saying. one there, yeah. I see what, I see what you mean, yeah. <laughs> That's what you're saying. Uh, both assassins, by the way. Both assassins. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, when he comes out, you know that is that there's going to be a, a demolition. Mm -hmm. This is the vibe that F Don has serious yeah, yeah the lyricism because he came from rap mm. okay and he is a sniper a sniper so yeah so, you, yeah. so you're definitely not bigging him up because esther's um cousin no 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 when he's, ben, he's when a serious would, guy when have you ever known brent no brent, 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 brent would just skip past <laughs> now <laughs> that man cannot last save his life <laughs> he would just skip past what I said. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, he came No, but he is, really he is, he really is. Yeah, he I had to check in, him out, man. He came in last week and mm. um, he reached early, like 30 minutes early, because that's the time they told him. Crazy. And he was a bit vexed. But anyway, so he was just chilling, chilling. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? He was a bit vexed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you would be when you're early to places and you're on time for when people mm. say you should be there and then they're not ready. Yeah. Why am I here then? But yeah. And then I'm. Um, he basically introduced himself and and he's like, oh, so the the TDA is it like under like the new back? So I'm like, oh, so you're familiar with this particular this dynamics? He's, uh, and he said, yeah. And he said, uh, my cousin and he pointed pointed to the seat. I said, your cousin Esther. He's like, yeah, yeah, my cousin cousin. I was like, really? Yeah, like our parents. His dad is my mom's older brother. Mm. Yeah. Well, I was like, all right then. Yeah. And that's when it is. Um, oh, my cousin cousin. Not your cousin cousin. <laughs> and then two other. Barras came through, and the exchange that they had while sat with Loons and Mags, it forced me to now go and watch their wrongs mm. because this one was their 
he was the bossiest mother ever. Mm. Like talking flagrant, right? Mm. Even to the, these two, flagrant. So wait, so wait, wait, let me ask you this, yeah. Yes. So are, are these guys basically talking up a battle they're going to have against each other? So yes and no. Okay, cool. I don't know if it is that, that was in the plan when okay, cool. Mags got them on, All right. but it ended up being that way. Sick. And Loons is invested in the entire franchise, so mm. is Binos. Mm. So they were like excited to even meet their quote-unquote heroes. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So it was a great conversation for the first 45 minutes. It was amazing. But anyway, um, so when I checked him out, I'm like, I, I understand why he's... You move like Black Rob. This one, he moves like Black Rob. Mm. <laughs> Everything about him, it's like Black Rob. So <laughs> if Black Rob was to go into the ring, that's who he would be. Do you understand? Mm. Flagrantly bossy, right? Then this one, F done, he's silent. But you can tell, wait a minute. There's a reason as to why he ain't talking too much. Mm. Then Loon's basically said, oh, this one, the killer. And I'm like, all right then, <laughs> all right then. And then this one smiles. He's just sitting there all handsome, just smiling. <laughs> just smiling. But apparently he's cold too. He must be. That's why, that's why he's sitting there smiling. Just smiling. You and then this one, one, Black Rob, mm. was there kind of swinging from smiles. <laughs> his nuts. <laughs> there were times when this went, <laughs> what the max and max started laughing. Because that's how he's come across. Because Loon's asked, out of the people in the, in the group, who do you kind of fear the most? Mm. This one kind of looked up to him. This one didn't this one say his name either. See? He just took it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right then, and F Dunn, mm. F Dunn's like, nah, I want to face the the, the baddest because then, Sick. yeah, it will bring me to my best. You understand? Mm -hmm. So even if it's a, a say a name right now, it's because I haven't faced him and I want to face him. You understand? And that's when he said, yeah, I want to face Smiles. But this one, boy, oh boy, I need to watch the episode, man. I'm not up to date, so I need to watch that last one. Yeah, proper, proper talented man. Six. Big up F Dunn. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Of course. Pen game, big up pen game, big up marks. Hundred percent. It will last now when he gets here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I say a, a big happy Saviour's Day to everybody? What's that? Happy <laughs> Saviour's Day. <laughs> what's that? You know, so mad because in my mind I was thinking, what's that? But you then said it <laughs> because it was when he said big. I was like, oh, like yeah, to, all, birthday to all my people in the, in the nation, man. Oh, that's why you're oh. in the gay. <laughs> Did they get? <laughs> I thought it was Jesus related. When have you ever seen this man coming here, Jesus related? <laughs> That's the only person that got savior. That's our you know, savior. You know, you know, He's got a few. Nah, but big, big up. Um, obviously, then you know it's been a year since I went to Chicago. It must have been two years now. When not the first year of T Day? You didn't go last year. No, nah, it was last year. It was last year, man. That's crazy. Yeah, I think it's because we obviously record every single day, so it seems everything like, feels like it's forever yeah. ago. But February last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same weekend. Ah. Mm-hmm. Same time. Where did you go this year? year. It's, it's a long story. It was a back. I almost. Are <laughs> you on the no fly list? No, no, impossible. They <laughs> 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 beat you. <laughs> I, I planned to go, but there was a, a couple back and forths here and there, and then kind of stuff. Yeah, it was. It was a bit. I yeah, I kind of took a bit too long as well to um to organize it. But yeah, man, just want to say big up, big up Ramsey as well, because Ramsey was tuned in yesterday. You know what For I'm the saying? Saviors Day. He, well, yeah, you saw him on the he, Zoom. He, no, so basically, I sent him the link to, to to listen to the minister speak. Okay. And he was listening, man. He was enjoying. It. He was agreeing with everything the minister was saying. I'll wait for Ramsey to tell me that himself. <laughs> Ramsey, you're in the chat. <laughs> confirm, my friend. Confirm. Then <laughs> pressure him. No, <laughs> no but so, yeah, sorry, go on. is that like a Zoom or what is that on? What? Uh, no, no. It was, it was basically like a like a live stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, okay. saw, we just watched the the live show, but it was in um, Detroit this year. Okay. Probably like I don't know, ten thousand people probably. Just like last year as well, mm. coming in. You were in Chicago last year, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was in Chicago last year. But this year I was in Detroit, the actual home of um, the Nation of Islam, mm -hmm. where it actually started in 1930. So, yeah. Where are the notes that you took? Notes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Do you guys make notes? So what did you see that was so valuable this to, time to, around? To, to be fair, I mean, like, every, <laughs> every, time sing, every single time is valuable. Everything the minister says is valuable. But this time was very um, focused on what's happening in you know Israel and Palestine. What did you say? Ba basically, well, first of all, is it going to get our platform cancelled? No, 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 at all, no, at all. Okay. To, to be fair, it's a similar, similar. Unless you think what Ramsey says. Is first of all, don't tag me in. <laughs> <laughs> I know your sentence is going. <laughs> no, but to, to basically, just saying, kind of what um, I guess Ramsey and some other people have been saying. To be fair, which is that guys, we need to obviously be mindful of the fact that this is not just a, a Israel versus Palestine thing. This is mm. a, a 
a white supremacy versus the world sort of thing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So we need to stand in solidarity with people in Palestine and also be mindful of, of where this started, where it's going now, and, and the fact that... Remember we spoke about um, Israel obviously forcing the Palestinians into Rafah, which is literally like the last stronghold, effectively. They want to clear everybody out of Palestine. Yeah. And, you know what I'm saying? So basically we were just talking about that, talking about the relationship with um, Israel's relationship with Biden, mm -hmm. with, with America as a whole, you know what I'm saying? And basically the, the role of the Islamic world and, and just and black people as well. Everyone basically who is just focused and, and watching what's going on there. We need to be mindful that we must not think it's going to start and end there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's, that's basically yeah. what the gist of it was um, mainly about, man. So yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, happy birthday to y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Look up the nation every time. Every time doing the work that other nations, other other groups, <laughs> organizations, communities. Why do I take it too do. far? Uh, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm, just too? I'm just Why highlighting. Just enjoy happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> no, because you know, obviously, I don't always get a chance to speak about the nation. The show. What? <laughs> <laughs> Brent, start the headlines. This is some foolishness. What? I'm just, I'm just highlighting, obviously, the fact that. They always put in good work, man. The nation's always working hard, man. Was it Tire Dr. Tirelessly. I don't think so. Oh. He's not part of the nation. Is he not? He's Dr. Umar. I've heard him say the nation many a times. And it's Umar. not in criticism. Yeah, that's because there's nothing to criticize about the nation, man. <laughs> Give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, nah, he's but he's... I'm sure he is. No, no, he's not, he's not Muslim. Mm. But I thought he was part of the nation because of um, the pro-blackness of it all. I've definitely heard that man talk about the nation. He... And I don't watch him like that. He, he might have bigged up the nation and the good work they're doing, but he's okay. not actually like a member oh, okay. of the nation. No, I thought he'd be like a special guest sometimes and like have talks and stuff. No, 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 oh. not that I'm aware of. No, well, did the nation or the savior, quote unquote, come an S, tell you to be about your business? What do you mean? Stand on business. To be about your business. Hundred percent. Stop tuning in and listening to me speak. Mm. You say be about your business. Hundred percent. Everybody. Um, Everybody. Basically, mm. man. I'm chilling in the limb. Listening to me speak. I'm glad you even said that, but because um, obviously back in the day, from from when um, the nation started celebrated um, mm -hmm. Saviour's Day, it was always spelt with saviors with the S with the apostrophe on the end, didn't it? Basically speaking about the saviour with regards to the, mm -hmm. the nation of Islam. But obviously, the minister changed that, basically highlighting what Brent's so, um, kind of saying in that everyone has to be an individual saver. Everyone yeah. has to put in the work for themselves, be about business, you know what I'm saying, and contribute to the whole we aspect of, of every discussion that we're having, you know what I'm saying? Because again, the nation's all about doing for self, isn't it? And so it's not about looking to the minister or looking to anybody else to, to do anything. It's about all of us contributing and, and you know, again, like Brent said, standing in business, man, and everyone being active and getting the work done for the liberation of the people. Do you get chills when you watch him? <laughs> I mean, it, it depends. It depends what's Does it feel moment, momentous? Say again? Does it feel momentous? What, every single time? I mean, I mean I'm, kind of, I'm kind of used to... Is it momentous or momentous? Momentous. I'm kind like of a, used like to... Like a moment in time. It depends. History it will remember. Fondly. It depends. 100%. Depends. There's, there's, there's definitely been... It's, it's kind of like... Um, you, you know how you had um, the March of Washington in the early 60s with, with the Martin Luther King? Yep. That, that was one of those momentous occasions, right? S similar sort of thing when when the minister was speaking at, million, at the Million Man March. You know what I'm saying? There's going to be those times that will never be forgotten. You know what I'm saying? T to me, anyway, the minister is, is probably the best orator of, of the last 100 years. To me. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody speaks like him. The only people, to me, again, in my, in my opinion, that's in that conversation is Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and Khalid Abdul Mohammed. But, but the minister, Minister Farrakhan, just speaks like nobody else. And I think this is why... Black people from all walks of life, regardless of your 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 creed, your gender, your religion, your belief systems, they all resonate with a lot of what the minister says. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, again, I don't think there's any leaders out there, especially black leaders anyway, that have put themselves out there speaking positively about black people like the minister has. You know what I'm saying? And that, that's, in, that's since the 70s. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Big when up the nation when Jesus time. comes back and he gives some <clears throat> lectures or... He speaks. Are you going to be as enamored? Because he's going to be the better orator than your <laughs> savior. Okay. <laughs> don't you don't believe so? Why, why do you think he's going to come back and, 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 and be giving lectures? I don't know. He might. 
<laughs> if I do the, the press run first, right? <laughs> <Can> you imagine. <laughs> hey, in 2024, 2025, you never know, man. You know what I mean? But, you know, yeah. Look, I'm glad that you have this man in your life, but I ain't worshipping, <laughs> yeah, I ain't worshipping no man. It's not about worshipping, man. Mm, reverence. Nobody, nobody, it's I'm about sure reverence you... and, and, and respect and, and everything. Like that, right? Did you, did you, were you yeah. nervous? Were you, lobby? were you went to the lobby? When? Oh, what, last lobby? year? No, this time oh. when you, doom, doom. No, when not, you it wasn't a Zoom. When you gave Ramsey the link, mm. did you call to find out if he was connected? No, we were, we were chatting on WhatsApp, innit? So, so basically... Y'all had a running commentary? I mean, not the entire thing, but yeah, because to be fair, I didn't send it to him from the very beginning. Did you record it? No, it's available. Everyone can go to NOI.org. Would you record it if it wasn't available? It would always be available. It would just be, it would be on YouTube. It would likely come out on YouTube. Like uh, all the other saviors. But you wanted to, to have that live stream, that live stream. 100%. 100%. Good for you, man. I mean, why, why, if, if we can spend time watching bloody Arsenal versus Newcastle <laughs> or watch football games, why, why can't I listen to something that's going to be beneficial to my life? You're right, you know. You look to prioritize the stuff that matters to you. And I was prioritizing the stuff that mattered to me this weekend. There you go. But but did you watch the game? Nope. You didn't watch the game? Couldn't didn't have time. This guy, you always watch the game, man. I, I, you always I know, put it on in the background. I know. And I felt away. But what I was doing was far more important. Okay. Dope. Good man. Yeah. <laughs> this guy. Anyway, uh, big up the nation every time, man. Happy Saviors Day, man. Love that. All right, let's get into our headlines. All right, so our first headline, the Deputy Prime Minister, Oliver Dowden, has declined to say whether Lee Anderson's comments were Islamophobic and said that the MP would have kept his role had he apologised. On Saturday, Mr Anderson was suspended as a Conservative MP after refusing to apologise for saying London, London Mayor Sadiq Khan is controlled by Islamists. Speaking on GB News, Mr. Anderson said, I don't actually believe that the Islamists have got control of our country. But what I do believe is that they've got control of Khan and they've got control of London. He's actually given our capital city away to his, away to his mates. On Saturday, Mr. Khan not only criticised Mr. Anderson for his comments, but also condemned Mr. Sunak and his cabinet for what he called a deafening silence on the matter. Mr. Anderson, who has been the MP for Ashfield since 2019, will now sit as an independent MP in the Commons. Crazy calling him Khan, bro. <laughs> Why? someone <laughs> popping up and referring to you as your last name? I mean, but that's that's cool, so. it? yeah, back home. Like, that's actually what we yeah. are. You never called. You didn't get called your first name. What was yeah. your last name? In, in what capacity? Every capacity. Every. Like, <laughs> serious. Yeah, my, yeah. I, can, I mean, I can say mine because my my old deleted name now. <laughs> but I was always called like Shalaja. Like every time that that's what you get called. That's my old last name. Mm-hmm. Are you looking at me like I'm a fraud? <laughs> <laughs> I'm hearing this for the first time. So not sure. I've definitely told you this. I don't, I can't, I haven't, so not sure. Okay, no, I haven't told you. I haven't told you. Because the way you're saying it, you're a bit shocked. Very shocked. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I know when I, you Back home. It. Back home, you okay. get... Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, back home, you get called by your last name. Like football. Because yeah. mm. you know, in football, a lot of people get called... Yeah, everybody. You get called by your last name. Mm-hmm. But yeah, back home, you literally... But then in that... Where I clocked up by Nigeria, you're very... Like, they're so proud of their names. Yeah. That like you always yeah, introduce yourself true. with your full... I think I said this to you. Remember when I, when I was going to do Black Tech last year? And then I read my voice, like, yeah. But then back home, like, they're very name mm-hmm. proud. Like, your name is... It's a badge of honour. Mm. It's very... Like, I love I love it. Proper proud of their names. So you always get... In school, you're, you're addressed by your last name. And even if you've got, like, an older sibling as well... That they know you as this is your family name. Family name is such a big thing. I started to take like shame and all that kind of stuff very seriously. A bit too seriously. But yeah. <laughs> um next headline. Donald Trump has claimed, imagine this. Donald Trump has claimed his four criminal cases have boosted his support amongst black Americans because they relate to being discriminated against. <laughs> 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 the former president so also funny. said imagine this he also said the mugshot taken of him after he was charged with trying to overturn a 2020 US election result oh gosh 
<laughs> the, former, the former president also said that the mugshot taken of him after he was charged with trying to overturn a 2020 U.S. election result in the state of Georgia was embraced by the black population. This was stated at an event for black conservatives in South Carolina just before Trump won his primary opponent's home state by a 20-point margin. This is fourth consecutive victory, by the way. Ms. Haley, who once served as a popular two-term governor of South Carolina, congratulated her opponent on his victory in her speech. She promised not to quit, however, saying that the roughly 40% of the vote she received was not some tiny group. She has recommitted uh, to staying in the race until at least Super Tuesday, which is the 5th of March, when voters in 16 states will cast their ballots on the same day. Um, is it safe to say that Trump's going to win this? I've been telling y'all he's going to win. <laughs> I mean, I... I don't know. I don't know. I have no horses in this race. Sadly. And our last headline, the body of Russian opposition politician Alexei Navalny has been handed over to his mother. Navalny spokesperson Kira Yamish said on X on Saturday that Alexei's body was given to his mother. Thank you to everybody who demanded this with us. Navalny's widow, Yulia Navalnaya, has earlier, well, had earlier demanded the release of his body for burial. This is a... a yeah, for, for burial, accusing the Russian president Vladimir Putin of mocking orthodox Christian values and torturing his corpse. She said in a video uh, message to Putin, you tortured him alive and now you keep torturing him dead. You mock the remains of the dead. The details of his funeral arrangements are yet to be determined, um, but it's unclear whether authorities will interfere. And that's it for the headlines. Thank you. Let's get into what you're saying topic of the day. Thingy in the thingy. All right, people. Topic of the day. So this this could be a controversial one, but it may be straight to the point. To be fair, um, and this is basically based on some news that was brought out at the end of last week about a new ruling in Alabama, right? And and I'll I'll get to the the backstory and why it even came to be and and whatnot. But long story short, the new ruling um, states that frozen embryos have the same legal rights as the living children. I'm going to say it one more time. Frozen embryos? Yes. Is that baby yet? Has has it, well, this this maybe this sperm, argument. No, but has the sperm connected with that though? Yes. Okay, well, yeah. Okay. I hear it. Okay. Well, th this, th let, me, let me just give you a bit of um, backstory. So um, a particular hospital or clinic is, is being um, sued by a couple, I think three or four couples, right? And basically this is because um, somebody mishandled um, the IVF stuff mm -hmm. and basically damaged it and the embryos are no more. And so they're pretty much suing uh, um, under the wrongful death of a minor act, right? Mm -hmm. And this is basically where this all comes from. So so, so basically, they're essentially, because of this whole wrongful um, death of a minor act, again, I'll get into some of the accurate terminology, what they're basically saying is, you, you've you murdered this child. Ah. <laughs> no, but you can't have it both ways. If you're going to say it is a living child and somebody has, has, has killed this child, the, the child is no more, then, you know what I'm saying? And this is basically where this is coming from. So the question is, should that be the case? Unborn children, are they children? I think they could be. I think unborn children are children. Okay. Because they grow up to be children. <laughs> but I don't know that they should carry like the sentencing or as as it would if someone actually shot and intentionally killed a child to harm the child. Mm. Like if someone harms a child, a, a child, a living child, mm -hmm. they intentionally did that and wanted to cause harm to that child. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I don't think it should be the same. I don't think it should carry the same sentencing as accidentally um, destroying an embryo. Well, I, I don't think it it will be like a, a whole thing about sentences. It's more so just suing them and stuff. But it's more so the implications of this now in in yeah. in, in, wide, in wider society. You know what I'm saying? Um, do you remember that case? I think we spoke about it. Remember the case with the um the lady from Modern Family? And Sophia Vergara. Yes. Love and her. the husband. Remember the husband? Yeah, wanted, and he wanted yeah, and he wanted uh, embryos and whatnot. He's now jumped onto this, isn't it? To basically. Well, say he would. <laughs> Fine ass, but because, still. Because <laughs> obviously he's he's basically thinking, wait a minute. This, that means this is my child. Essentially, you can't yeah. just now keep my child frozen somewhere. <clears throat> this is a living child. I have a right to. Yeah, of course. I, I, I expect him to jump on it, but then at the same time, you, sorry, but it is what it is. <laughs> it's news you lose. Mm. 
Well, let me, let me read some of the article just, just so that everyone's kind of uh, on the same page. So basically, a hospital in Alabama has suspended IVF treatment after the state Supreme Court ruled that the frozen embry embryos have the same legal rights as living children. The court passed the most draconian anti-abortion laws in the United States last week, ruling that anyone who destroys a frozen embryo can now face criminal prosecution under the wrongful death of a minor act, right? So with IVF pr providers taking legal advice and patients reported to be seeking to move their frozen embryos out of state, the University of Alabama at Birmingham Hospital announced on Wednesday that it was temporarily halting IVF services as it evaluates the Alabama Supreme Court's decision. So this is the, implica the implications of this. All these companies now who are doing the IVF um, treatment for, for couples mm -hmm. are now going to be thinking, wait a minute, what's going to happen when we choose to discard these embryos? For example, maybe they're no longer needed, whatever it may be. If we discard them now, we could face legal prosecution. Yeah, but just make people sign a consent form that they are aware that your, the embryos have been discarded. I don't, I don't think it's as simple as that, though. No, but as in, as in like, the people don't want the embryos anymore. Mm. Is this an example? People don't want ex embryos anymore. Mm -hmm. And so the facility that's keeping them are going to discard of it. It might be that, or it just might be uh, maybe a certain amount of time. Because I think you you pay to, to store them, isn't it? For a certain amount of time. Yeah. Right? So let's just say, I don't know. Again, I'm, I'm kind of making this up. Yeah. But let's just say the person stops their subscription and maybe it's been X amount of time and it's yeah. in a contract. Maybe after a year, if you're not paying anymore, a children are interested, da, 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 we get rid of it. I don't know. Whatever reason they have. Yeah, legal documents will cover that. Okay. Okay. Um, Ree says, not all embryos take when implanted in the woman, though. So how sure are they that this embryo implantation would have to, would have been successful? Mm. That's the point. Good point. Good point. But I don't think, yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, Ramsey says, what does that mean for women who suffer miscarriages? Are they going to get investigated for possible, mur for possible murder as they would for a child that was born? Yeah, I think saying that it's, this, it's got the same rights as a living child is a bit... Yeah. Mm. It, 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 there's too many scenarios it's not going to work for. Mm. I could understand them being sued for negligence mm -hmm. and that, that's fair. But they, I don't think they should be sued for a flipping murder. I think negligence is more up mm. the street. But I, I guess it's, it's how big the, the situation is because potentially these people, again, a lot of the people who, who kind of, you know, put their eggs there and, and fertilize their eggs and whatnot may have suffered from cancer um, yeah, or, 100%. you know what I'm saying? So they'll never get this back. It's so a big, I, bigger lawsuit. Yeah, I, I, I guess so. But I, th I think they just want it to be a bit stronger. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but bigger lawsuit because, again, you can't get someone on a murder charge mm. and get them now going to jail or get them now suspended the suspended license. Because, mm. again, like they right, rightfully said, you don't know if it's going to take or not. So, yeah, that might be the last hope, but we don't know We don't know what we don't know. So... Basically, you're, make, you're making a good point about the negligence thing. But what about the situation where they're discarding? So in that situation there, that mm. was negligence. Somebody dropped something, yeah. right? But what about these companies who throw it away? But that's what I'm saying, though. In those conversations, what they need, there needs to be legal documents that cover those spaces. Okay. So if it's a case where you stop your you stop your subscription and then they don't hear from you for three months or however long it takes to keep an embryo alive, mm -hmm. then it gets discarded. You can't sue us. Put it in the documents. T's and C's. People don't read those. But let, also let them know that. <laughs> Let them know that this is our procedure. If this doesn't happen, da, 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 we will need the space and we'll have to discard of it. Mm. Everyone will be fine. All right. Well, let, let me read this uh, this particular thingy. IVF counted for 91, almost 100,000 uh, births in 2021 um, in America. Right? In Alabama, there were 1,219 IVF procedures and 407 births that year. The ruling in Alabama followed a lawsuit brought by three couples seeking to sue for wrongful death after their frozen embryos were dropped and destroyed in an accident at storage facilities. This is where it was come from, right? In the majority decision by the all-Republican court on Friday, Justice Jay Mitchell wrote, unborn children are children, without exception based on developmental stage, physical location, or any ancillary characteristics. And th th this is the thing, though. Firstly, do we agree with him? I do agree that unborn children are children. I do agree that when the embryo is, however old it is, that mm. is a child. Like, if the child is my stomach, I'm seeing that as my child. I'm not going to be referring to it as an embryo. I'm going to be referring to it as my child, my baby and whatnot. So I agree with that. But I think that, unfortunately, there are, there still has to be, it, it's not it, It's not just black, it's not black and white like that. Mm -hmm. And so unfortunately, the laws and the people that are in charge need to sit down and put their little heads together. Mm. I come up with something because it it, it's not going to be the same. 
I guess this comes from the same spirit of, of those who don't who want to ban abortion. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because in, <clears throat> in Alabama, pardon me, a near total Alabash, a near total abortion ban came into effect in 2022. The state now accounts for almost half of all criminal cases related to pregnancy in the US. Imagine. Mm -hmm. Um, the full ram ramifications of the latest decision are still uncertain, but since every created embryo is now a child in the eyes of the law, several elements of the IVF process are not, could now be um, in legal jeopardy. So this is what opponents are saying. They're pretty much saying that it may now be illegal for IVF providers to freeze, thaw, or test embryos now. Because of anything, right? Couples seeking treatment commonly um, have more embryos than they use uh, to try again. Yeah, then they choose, obviously, so they can try again, um, you know, if their first attempt fails, whatever. But that raises questions about whether clinics can legally dispose or discard embryos. Like you said, obviously, it may just be a thing in the, in the contract. There may yeah. be, you know, this, that, and the third. But I don't know how many people are going to willingly sign a contract that says, you know what, after a certain amount of time, get rid of my eggs, get rid of my embryos. People would. That is, sure. No, but there's a lot of contracts that we sign that people don't, like, there's a lot of things like that in life. Yeah, but because either that you're or you're gonna you're gonna sue them. So, and, or, and this or is the in the or what? No, but what can be in the contract then is that you won't sue us then under any any circumstances. But but I think this is the problem now because then I think I think people are now saying like IVF um, clinics will just be a thing of the past because if if for example you're not willing to sign this, then they can't they're not willing to now <laughs> do the procedure because of yeah. So then you, that you're gonna sue us. Yeah, but then you have to determine how serious you are about something. Like. Who? Who, the company or the The, the person couple? that's wanting to um, store their embryos. Mm. Like, I will only sue you if there is any case or if, if, if it's, um, if there's any, if any um, suspicion of negligence or if I know that you've intentionally gone to harm whatever, whatever, like harmed my thingy. This is a good market for lawyers. I don't know why the solicitors aren't <laughs> forming up, forming a line. But... Because, yeah, okay, you don't want to sign a contract that says that they could, get, they could get rid of it, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fair, but I will only sue you then then they make them sign a contract that says that they will only sue you in the case of negligence or in the case of um, particular harm or blah, 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 blah. Mm. It's law. They can come up with, there's like there's ways around these things. It's not like a shut door. Like, you know, there's no other options. Okay. They've got this. People that's listening, um, if you want to call in, um, you can log into the, the Discord in, Brent, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I want to ask this question now. In this particular, if, if we are saying that this child is a child, this embryo is a child, yeah. I should say, what 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 does that look like for abortions then? Are we saying that these mothers are killing? I know people say this already, but yeah. are we saying that these people are, are basically killing and potentially could be on trial if there's no um, health risks? Mm. Yeah, but that's my that's my business though. I'm focused on my uterus. <laughs> what like, do you mean? <laughs> You're open. Like, I'm focused on myself. <laughs> Whether someone else thinks that because not everybody sees embryos as living children. That's that's, that's yeah. a personal thing. Mm -hmm. So if I see it as that and the woman next to me doesn't see it as that and she gets an abortion, I'm not going to be calling her a murderer or anything like that because she doesn't see she doesn't, she doesn't hold this to the same standard that I hold it. So it's not my business. But it's not it's not it's not a case of us pet what our personal views is. It's more so about the law. You know what I'm saying? You because say that, but people that are carrying placards outside abortion <laughs> clinics, they carry it on their head. Yeah, hundred percent. But forget their people. <laughs> Let's just say we're living in Alabama right now. And this is the law. And we're saying, you know, we're, mm -hmm. we're pro-lifers. We understand. Da, da, da. And yeah, obviously, we're not out there pla um, with, with the placards or whatnot. But if we live in this state and this law has been passed, yeah. that means no one, if, effectively, it will go into the abortion thing. No, no one can get abortions. And people are now saying that, you know what, this started because of Trump. This whole Roe versus Wade thing. Yeah. This is just tr trickling down because of Trump's views and things of that nature. And soon... This may be a nationwide thing mm -hmm. where everyone will start to consider that these are kids. Yeah. And if it is that they are kids, what does this look like for abortion? Because right now, obviously, they overturn, they overturn the, the abortion laws. Anyway. Yeah. But what will the real um, implications be if every state now takes on this particular um, belief? It'd be crazy. Every, every, like women will basically potentially be accused of murder. And I think like Ramsey yeah. was saying. And I think, yeah. Hmm, and even like when you think about back in the day, before abortion was legal, people had to, people were going to get it back door, and that was causing a lot of deaths and all that kind of stuff. Yep. I mean, I still know people that the people that were voting into these positions anyway. And yeah, they must be all sharing one brain, bro. <laughs> and there's that. It's I don't know. I think it's tricky. I feel like yeah, it's tricky. To be honest. Ben, what, what's your thoughts on this? 
Um, the question is, do I see it as a uh, born baby? Do you feel like emb embryos should have the same rights, the exact same rights as living children? Not all of them. Why? Are they living children? Because one is in the land of the living and the other isn't yet. I mean, are you sure that that's not also a living environment? It's a living environment. It's not the same environment. They don't have to be the same. Like, would you say somebody on the moon is no longer a, a human being or a living person? I, I didn't say the embryo wasn't a human being. I said that the laws of the environment in which it is that they are in mm. shouldn't be the same because they're in different environments. Yeah, of course. But what, what I'm saying is that same person's out in this world, right? They can be seen, but they're just on the moon. Would they have different rights now, do you feel? Do, if should they have the different rights? Yeah. Well, 100% uh, shouldn't be... Um, they shouldn't be subject to earthly dominion or governance because they're not on earth. They're not on earth. Okay. The same way when you go to a different country, you have to live by the rules of said country. Mm -hmm. So there should be different um, applications of governance when it is that you leave Earth's atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. But in, in terms of, I guess, the basic rights, which is just the right to and live. This is what I want you to be specific as to what rights do you want me yeah. to apply to each and uh, each um, living thing in each in each different environment. Give me specifics. All right. So in terms of just, I guess, the right to live, the right to be, the, the right to basically not die, I should say. Because essentially, if you discard this particular um, embryo, it's now gone, it's dead, right? But if it's still there in storage... Not exactly the same as somebody being on um, a life machine, but you're still there. There's the potential that you have a tomorrow. Do they deserve that right? Should they have that right by law? What does that look like? Hmm? What does that look like? Just, just, just. I guess the fact that you, no one can ever discard them. Yeah, I mean, for as long as it is that it's possible. Yeah, I mean, if you're saying that money needs to be spent on machines to keep them alive and mm -hmm. it should come from taxpayers' money and whatnot, then is that what you're asking me? No, I'm definitely not saying taxpayers' money. Oh, you don't want to <laughs> participate in that? It's like, somebody else's kid's not my business. Especially if the kid ain't born. All right. So <laughs> I'm, I'm saying, if, they want, if, if for example, like, like IVF is, is a personal thing, unless obviously those situations where it's on the NHS, right? But typically, especially in, a, in America, more, more, more times than not, it's, it's still a personal thing. You're paying a particular business to do this procedure for you. You know what I'm saying? But in in this in this situation where again these couples feel hard done hard hard done by because their embryo has been discarded because obviously accidentally um, you know certain things happened even last week remember we were talking about what happened at um, was it Guy's Hospital where like a hundred hundred or so um, different um, embryos or or so, something like that got um, discarded or got contaminated or something like that and they had to get thrown away situations like that where people's only chances at having children. Are thrown in a bin, like what? Are the, what are the sort of implications of this? What? What? What should the consequences be to this particular establishment? So basically, what you're asking is, suppose there was a factory. There were two factories. Mm -hmm. One with um, babies that had just been born, and they're being kept in this particular room, and they're on like some sort of uh, assisted um, living apparatus. Yeah, and mm -hmm. they're keeping them warm. They're keeping them fed. Blah 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 blah. Then you have this next uh, factory, and in that particular factory, you have all these embryos, right? And you have um, workers who look after that particular factory, and you have workers who look after that particular factory. If, due to some negligence in the factory that has all the born babies, all the babies, um, God forbid, just get sent to heaven, yeah? Mm -hmm. The particular um, punishment for those people would be dire, right? Because, wow. On your, um, on your watch, all these babies went to heaven. Mm -hmm. um, are you asking, should the same punishment be handed to those who are in the other factory if negligence of that same um, wait or waiting happens and then all those embryos go kaput? Yeah. No. Okay, and why is that? Because one is in the land of the living. We have seen it wiggling and whatnot. We can feel it. And mm, maybe not. Maybe mm -hmm. it should be. Maybe it should be the same. Okay. So that they are more 
oh, more diligent with what they're doing. Because those could be the bonds. Exactly. I like that, the bonds. The bonds. I'll call them the bonds, right? And the unborns. They could be the bonds. Yeah. Because they're developing. Embryos Thanks. are still Precisely. developed in a certain stage, they got but it's still stage, developing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm So if you are negligent, you should be punished. Mm. You should be punished. But I think it should be 75% of the punishment of the other one. Okay, so not to the same degree. I don't think it should be to the same degree. But did, uh, Because there's so many things that we don't know about embryos that we know about the bones. Mm-hmm. The bones where, send me. <laughs> where something could happen without us doing anything and mm-hmm. the unborns could be um, ushered to, to Christ. Or to your saviour, depending on... on yeah, it turns out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so so uh, even even though you're saying there will be varying degrees of this, right? You're still basically. This is just that example I've given you, by the way. This yeah, yeah, example where there are two facilities, mm-hmm. one has the unborns and one has the borns, mm-hmm. and there are people um, sent to watch after both of them. Because mm-hmm. if you've sent to watch after both of them, you know the importance of of both. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. So there's some form of responsibility needs to be attached to those people. Mm-hmm. Hundred percent. That's but, that scenario. But but the reason why, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the reason why I guess you're you want to punish these people, even if it's not to the same degree, is because of I guess the importance or the value of of the lives of the unborn. Uh, again, it's due to the negligence. If it's if okay. it's if it's seen or investigated and it comes up as you being negligent, mm-hmm. that's 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 how it is that they should be punished. If it wasn't, mm-hmm. then they shouldn't be punished. But the same way as the other people shouldn't be punished if. It wasn't their fault. What What if it was not negligent? It was just, this may sound like a silly question, but it was mm. just, we decided we need more space. You guys have been there for 10 years. Let's just get rid of you guys. So I, 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 you need to color this okay. question for me because if that's what you're now saying... Yeah, it's a, it's a new scenario I'm now presenting. I'm just adding another thing There's some policy where after a while, something expires and new, new things come in. But okay. In my head, the embryos are... Waiting patiently for a host, right? Mm-hmm. So why are you getting rid of some? Like, what have you found out from the ones that are currently there that you now have to get rid of them to replace I mean, them with new ones? I, I guess, like, like everything in life, like everything, um, every resource is finite, finite, right? So, so I guess with time, with more people, you know, want to do IVF and more of these unborns coming into existence, we can't have the storage space for everything. At some point in time, you say to yourself, you know what? Maybe how we were even storing them back then isn't the most efficient way. And maybe we've we've realized that, I don't know, just something comes up where it's like, cool, let's get rid of these because they're not even in use. They could have been the bloody 50 years old, 50 uh, bloody um, years now. Maybe the parent even like is dead now. You know what I'm saying? I'm obviously kind of giving you different scenarios, but I'm basically just saying there's a reason that the, they're saying the time in which it is that these embryos are frozen. The the, the, the vitality vitality of the embryos d- decrease or I, diminish. I don't believe so. If it doesn't, then is this a made to order setup? Elaborate in what way? The embryos that are being stored. Okay. Is it due to people saying? All right, this is the the skittle mix up that I want. This is the pick and mix that I want. How did it? How did it's, it? It's, it's not the celebrity one. If that's what you're basically asking. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm asking. If okay. it, is, is it made to order? Is like no. It's, it's more so like these are the eggs that if you, you, want you one can pop retrieve in. from me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is the sperm that my partner's brought, and let's see how many we can actually get to to fertilize, and let's see eventually when we're ready to implant, if they 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 keep. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like. This particular eye, I want this particular color, and none of that stuff. Then I need to know no why babies. would there be a reset? Why would there be a clean out? Why would it be spring cleaning? I, I think, like, like, like I'm saying, like, because obviously, you know, I, I can't necessarily foresee what the new reason will be, but I'm just trying to present a reason that would basically um, cause a particular company to say, you know what, we're going to get rid of them. Because the reality is, since the first IVF treatment and all these companies that have come into existence, Companies have been discarding embryos for whatever reason. You know what I'm saying? They've been dis- doing it, right? And it's kind of been the normal thing. But I guess this has become an issue because this particular thing happened by accident. You know what I'm saying? The- this couple still wanted these embryos. And so 
the 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 legal route that they're they're channeling is wait a minute this is a living child here so that means you've effectively killed a living child if we're going to view these embryos as living children so this is what i'm basically saying to you in that situation what would the implications be because if you if you like in my brain i I can't help but relate it to abortion. That's why I was asking Esther about the whole thing about it, it may get to a stage where it's like, forget the negligence part of it. If this company decided to get rid of these um, embryos, surely if nothing happens to them, nothing should happen to those women who choose to get rid of their, their embryos as well because they don't want to carry on with the pregnancy. But if something happens to these particular companies, surely that same thing will apply to women who say, I want to get rid of this child. If it's connected, then no. The embryo should be able to be passed in the back, the side, the front. I don't want any implication attached to women who want to get rid of um, the embryos. If that's what you're trying <laughs> to get me done. I'm not trying to lead you anyway. I'm, I'm, I'm just basically well. saying this is the question for society. This is not me leading you or me or Esther or anybody. This is just questions for society. If that opens up the door yeah. for the other, yeah. then I want no part of it. I will fight against joining them. Okay, cool. All right. Well, I, 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 I don't think it's possible to, to keep them separate. And I think this is what we're, we're kind of seeing, where um, these IVF companies will now say, you know what, we can't do business in this particular state because we know what's going to be coming. And also, it's no coincidence that a lot of these states, like Alabama, are making it very hard for the abortion laws. You to better keep them separate. Yeah. The way it, the way the scenarios could happen that the woman even even has this embryo is completely different to what could happen with those factory, um, bought, onboards. It's completely different. I I know the existence is is completely different, but if you're still seeing this as a living child. Like, yeah, it can't be a sub you need more new ones. You can't just be a black and white with this one. You can't. I'm sorry, you can't. Again, this is not your view, my view, or anybody's view. I'm just saying, for those out there who have seen this, if, if you can say this is a living child, right? L like Alabama is saying, I, I don't know if you can put nuance in a living child. If, if you see a child walking around outside right now, what nuance do you put you on, on their existence? You have nuance in living children. I mean, when it is, they now look to um, do the euthanasia approach yeah you're deciding that now you understand nuance now you you factoring in no, but that's illegal though isn't it what euthanasia well in this country uh, assisted anyway. passing yeah that's why they have to travel isn't it this is where when you just said it's legal certain parts it's legal but when you just said that's why you have to travel because certain parts is illegal oh yeah yeah of course but, but I'm, I'm kind of talking about obviously like where we are in and america as well stuff like that in like obviously maybe Switzerland or one of these European countries, you know. Yeah, what, what I'm saying is that even when you talk about mm. having machines where people are left on um, assisted living, like comas, comas mm -hmm. or whatnot, right? It still comes down to a finance um, uh, argument. Okay. How long can you basically keep this particular machine running, right? And where you're there saying, but you can't look to separate them. In this, these cases, they separate them. If the money isn't coming, boom. There's no liability on the, the hospital after that, right? Mm -hmm. But I think also with the euthanasia thing that you mentioned, uh, the, they're choosing it themselves. You know what I'm saying? They, they're choosing to kind of say, you know what, I've had enough of life. It's difficult, the pain I'm going through. And they made the choice themselves. You know what I'm saying? And they, they've paid somebody to go to a particular country where it's allowed. And, you know, unfortunately, um, they pass away. But... Somebody's deciding for these kids. You know what I'm saying? They're not kids. <laughs> this guy. You understand what I'm trying to say, though? You yes, but that's why I use that um, specifically because that's where my mind is at. I hear you. They're not I kids. Hear I hear you. They can't have the same amount of um, lived grace. Mm. Human grace as the unborns. Because as Ramsey said, they may not even take. We don't even know if they're qualified yet to run around this this earth of ours. And I keep thinking, I don't think there's a soul attached to that just yet. See, this this is even another part of the discussion. I don't, I don't think. I don't think there is. So when yet. does this, when does the soul become attached? I know it's half you to answer this, but you get what I'm trying to. How many souls do twins have? Like conjoined twins. <laughs> 
You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. These are... The, these are sensible questions. Of course they are. <laughs> you know what I'm I'm saying? Answering them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, no, because when you first said it, in my head, I'm thinking, obviously, if they're identical twins, the the, the egg was fertilized mm-hmm. and they were one. Then they split. You know what I'm saying? And I guess some twins may split maybe a fraction of a certain time earlier than another, right? But I'm even talking about the ones that pop up. With yeah, yeah, I know, I know you, I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'm basically just saying, like, in real life, though, where we've got twins, at what point did the soul come in? Is, is this one soul that split with the eggs? Well, when it come or out this... of the womb, then that's when the soul gets in there. Okay, so this is what you're saying. Yeah, but that's because they're soulless. Dogs don't have souls. Yes, people are very, are very much rallying mm-hmm. for their rights. Mm-hmm. So soul is not the determination of whether we should save the, these embryos or not. Mm. Hella that's a, that's a good animals don't have souls, and yet they've got a lot of charities and a lot of inheritance. <laughs> that's, that's, just just so that, that's not the that part. Being this stupid. Well, <laughs> it's know. an argument. Human beings I'm are not a pet lover stupid. anyway, so this is why I, I take such a, a, a staunch. But human beings are eggs, position. Though, generally, yeah. very silly people. I saw. I don't know if it is that we all saw this. I don't know why it's imprinted in my brain. Like there was a guy that licked his dog, or his dog licked his his face, mm. and he got sepsis. Did we talk about this here? Yeah. I don't think so. And his hands fell off, his feet fell off. What? His face was just yeah, eaten away. When you let dogs lick you. They lick their ass and you let them put that on your face. Disgusting. And then lick other dogs and you let them put it on your face. I, mean, I feel like it just sounds like he had the day he got the day he deserved. I think this dog was playing <laughs> in some dirty pond or lake or something. But dogs are dirty. Mm. Dogs are absolutely filthy. Because when you think, like when they go outside yet, these, that's what they like, they put on one and then they kind of step on the grass to mark, finish off their finishings. Cuts. Coming. Is that cats? Cats do that. Okay. Um, is that they, they don't even like to touch their, their shit. Can you um, imagine? But they lick their bum. Dogs? I, no, cats do. Yeah, yeah, they lick everything. Yeah. But t- t- is that a red flag for you? I I'm not a pet. No, I'm not a pet person at all. So I can never be regarded as a pet. You need to hand some mother effer. Perfect. No. In every single no. way. No. Loves the Lord. I already Zealously. I broke not, up with a guy that had a pet. Not this saviour. The mm. saviour. I right? did. And he can no, cook. No. He can give back rubs. Don't care. I can find that excluding the pet. And then you find out he licks dogs. That's not possible. He lets lot. I used to date a guy. I, honestly, I used to date a guy I really, really liked. And then he had a dog. And I just said, this can't work. This just can't work. So I just, yeah, tapped out. I can't, I would never be with somebody who has pets. It's literally impossible. It's impossible. How about you, Mania? Well, the pet thing, um, I think it depends on the pet. But like proper dogs, I don't know why I said proper. I mean proper dogs. <laughs> but you know some dogs are proper dogs. Proper dogs are there. And you know there's some dogs that are like honestly. Excel like, bully. Yeah, all them stupid ass dogs, which is like 99% of them. <laughs> it's impossible. I'm not interested. I don't like pets like that. You know what I'm saying? Like small ones, puppy for let's just say six months. After six months, we can discard you. <laughs> That's wild. Sell, sell you. Wait, 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 Peter about to get you. Wait a minute. I said discard. So you can discard dogs, but after six months, so you're going to be churning in new pets when they get to move like Leonardo and DiCaprio. That's wild. <laughs> yeah, man. No, Having joking. pets is definitely not a thing for me. Like it's not. Like I don't care. To be fair, he wouldn't be perfect though. Mm. He's got a dog. Not perfect. And the house will smell, man. It's just not it, man. Dogs bear lips in you. Oh. You come and try lips me with that. I don't know how people do that, you know, just kissing lips and tongue and all sorts. It's saying human beings, I don't even lips. <laughs> how much more? A pet has been licking its own bum. Mm. Disgusting. But yes, all right, I guess we can move on from there. All right, let's get into our. All right, so our next headline, um, three female MPs have been given bodyguards and chauffeur-driven cars after concerns about their safety, man. The MPs who have not been named have been given close protection by private companies. A senior sec- security source told the newspaper that many MPs are petrified by the abuse that they're facing. A new process has been introduced in recent weeks in which the Royal and VIP Executive Committee, responsible for the security of the Royal Family and senior politicians, has been deployed to help assess the threats to these MPs. It comes after Lindsay Hoyle, the common speaker, we spoke about him last week, recently warned of the growing threat to politicians from the far right. Next headline, Graham Norton. 
he delivered a farewell message, man, to listeners at the end yeah. of the final episode, yeah, of his Virgin Radio weekend show. The Irish broadcaster announced on Saturday that he would be stepping down from the regular slot after three years, with Sunday's episode to be his final one. Norton joined BBC Radio 2 in 2010, hosting a 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Saturday show, which had previously been presented by Jonathan Ross. In 2021, he moved the series from Radio 2 to Virgin. And while he's leaving um, his weekend post, Norton will continue to work as a presenter for the broadcaster in other capacities. A new presenter will now be announced in the coming weeks with Angela Scanlon, Scanlon stepping in as a short-term uh, replacement. And our last headline takes us to Africa, where the West African Regional Bloc ECOWAS said on yes, um, said on Saturday that it would lift strict sanctions on Niger as it seeks a new strategy to dissuade three junta-led states, which is Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso. Um, basically, they want to dissuade them from withdrawing from the political and economic uh, union, which is a move that threatens regional uh, integration. We spoke about this briefly last week. Um, but yeah, the leaders of ECOWAS met to address the political crisis in a coup hit region that deepened in January with military ruled Niger, Burkina Faso and Mali's decision to exit the 15 member bloc. After closed door talks, ECOWAS said it had, it had decided to lift Niger's sanctions, including border closures, the freedom of the freezing pardon me, of central bank and state assets and the suspension of commercial transactions with immediate effect. The bloc further urges the countries to reconsider the decision in view of the benefits that the ECOWAS member states and their citizens enjoy in the community. It has also said that it had lifted certain sanctions on the junta-led Guinea, which has not said it. Sorry, guys. I've got a question. You're supposed to make a scene. <laughs> I like your tracksuit. Thank that you. That is proper lit. How do you not consider yourself people of God and you think animals don't have souls? <laughs> Were you reported by someone's death or something? Um, no. Okay. Mm. It's just, it's I don't think animals just, have souls. It's just a query. I heard. If I go to heaven <laughs> and I see animals there, God's creatures. I am in hell. God's creatures. I don't understand how I can be scared of animals. Wait, I can All be scared of animals on earth. creatures, great and small. <laughs> How's it go again? When he says small, means the people. Wonderful. But you numb them. You eat them. Okay. You so you're eating souls. Them. How many souls are you're in you? You're a eater. Survival of the fish. Don't eat souls. I don't know what soul tastes like. Well, you do. This is soul it's food. Everything you eat. Okay. Huh? Right. <laughs> this food. is soul <laughs> food. I don't know. I don't know what we're talking about. This if you think animals greens. have souls and you've been eating them, then you are oh, no. you're worse than me. You ain't seen all dogs go to heaven. That's a, that's a good cartoon. <laughs> <Huh? Okay. laughs> I'm telling you this right now. If I get to heaven, not even if, when I get to heaven, mm. and I see, if I see animals in there, dolphins, I am in hell. I don't care. <laughs> dolphins are slimy and just icky. <laughs> that, that's that's sting like though. fish. What? Would it, would, will there be dolphins? I don't expect any animals in there. How, how is the sea in the sky? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, there's going to be no animals in heaven. Of course there are. Are we sure about this? There's not, man. How can I, God's God's precious daughter, they be scared of the animals here and he's going to chase they might me? Be, but it'll be in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I know what we're lacking on this show, but you are being dead I'm serious, dead man. serious. My worst fear here is going to heaven and seeing a pigeon. Budgies. I would die again. <laughs> Budgies. It, it depends. I think it Humming depends. Humming Come on. Birds are the worst. Do you just have to want to see pigeons? I hate birds. Birds are the worst animals there are. Of all the animals God created, I'll take an example of a Philippine. One second. The birds don't sing in the morning and you don't think you're in heaven. The angels will be singing. This is crazy. The angels will be singing. Their chords and all sorts. A hell of instruments. If I go there and the birds are singing, I know I'm not in heaven. That's wild. <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> what if it's just the audio but you don't see the birds? <laughs> like I'm being taunted. I didn't want that. That's messing with me. Messing I'm surprised to hear you say that, that you think animals ain't got souls. I'm nearly, I'm nearly of the mindset that, of course. But what's it? What do they use their souls for? Great, great, <laughs> grace in the land, and that puts that puts grace in the land. That's camels. To Christianity and that good book huh? just puts paid to all of that. Why? Because if you're saying that I could have lived like a dog, that's not what anybody's Bro. saying. Did you're God, saying I could have lived like a dog? Did I could God, have been sewing my roll oats all over the gap. Did God create animals? Okay. That's why I need to just of check here first. Of course he did. Of not course he did. Not all of them. Yeah, but he said he created yeah, but he created man. I'm actually, there. Yeah, we're, we're here. We're here. No, but God says though, I create he created man in his image. He didn't say he created the dogs, the dolphins, and whatever crap in his image. Yeah, he keeps Only humans are the ones that them. that are like that can be like God, like have a mind, have souls. And give us thinking. dominion over them. Mm. 
And we get, yeah, exactly. You give us dominion over them, over the soulless ones. Okay, so what about them in their in their own so animals? You said obviously they have their own mind, they have their own way of thinking. Animals, animals have no autonomy. Animals have no way of clip. think. Animals don't think. Animals don't communicate. They got no, they got no they animals got don't think or communicate between each other. That's why, that's why they used yeah. to sacrifice the animals. And then once Jesus came... But they used came, to sacrifice humans. They didn't have to. Once Jesus came, you didn't yeah. have to anymore. Not for your sins, they weren't. Yeah, but they used to sacrifice humans. No, not for your sins. For your sins, yeah. atonement and that was yeah. animals. Pigeons, sparrows and all that kind of stuff. To be fair, it depends on the culture. Excuse me, I go by the culture of the Bible. <laughs> and I, I, I never read about Abraham and all of them people <laughs> sacrificing what they... I know, you, I know you might bring up Isaac, but that was the whole test and <laughs> that didn't go, we didn't go through with that. Yeah, that's his son, actually. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's that was so a human awesome. sacrifice. Nearly Jesus is the only human sacrifice that's ever been. That's what, the biggest what, what one. What do you say to this? There you have fact, it. Before I ask the other question, I want to just put this up because I don't want anybody to just forget that this person said this. Is it immature, right? Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna address it. I sleep, so, but with, I sleep my with my dog. I used to think I would never until I got one. Yeah, yeah. I still just think so what I said. This young lady. This is what you're capable of. All right, so we know from a future yeah. tense. You get me. And and then, and then she looks so pleasant as well. Yeah, yeah you never, never know. Never know. Unsuspecting. <laughs> never know. <laughs> <laughs> They're always unsuspecting. That's how they get you. All right. So, animals have souls. They react and feel things. Are we saying that everything that? that feels things have souls? Oh no! Can you expand it? We can't see the comment. Oh. Okay. okay so animals have souls. You don't they need a soul for that. No. This this what I was going to ask you. What do, the plants have souls? Do pigeons have brains? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, yeah. Obviously, when you try to kick a pigeon, it tries to move. So you're telling me that it hasn't got a soul. What the pigeon? No a pigeon hasn't got a soul. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think pigeons have brains. Personally, I think they're dumb as heck. That's but why they fly that, into things. The way like photosynthesis and all that stuff, and the way that mm. the plants replenish and all that kind of stuff, and the science behind it. Mm. There could be something godly in there. there I, could think, be. I think people are confused. And again, it's all God's creations. There could be some kind of so life, plants have souls life too, force. Then. Yeah, I think, I think in, so. In, plants have souls. There could be some type of life force in, yeah, in you nature. Are, you it's nature. No, but life this, force is nature. People are confused. You're confusing life and soul. Humans have life and soul. Other things have life. How the hell is a hibiscus going to have flipping soul in it? What does it need the soul for? <laughs> what roses? What do roses need souls for? Why did you say her biscuits? Because I've been drinking a lot of that tea. <laughs> I literally I drink that every day. But like, do you mean what? What does a rose need a soul for? Mm. How do it gives people messages on Valentine's Day? No, these things don't have. They have life in them. Animals have life in them, but they don't have souls. Mm. And the life that they have in, is in them is why they're able to feel things. Like when you see animals that rescue babies and all that kind of stuff. Because they have that, they can feel, mm -hmm. but that doesn't. It's not attached to a soul. Because that means you, you guys should want like. So you think that what's it called? Dogs and stuff have religions then. <laughs> religions is um, is potentially um, man-made <laughs> construct. I did see a pigeon congregation one time though. <laughs> it was a head pigeon, right? And see? it was like a bunch of pigeons <laughs> looking to that one pigeon, like taking instruction. It's crazy. It's just an interesting take that you actually believe that animals don't have souls. And yeah, your yeah. reason is because we consume them. And that's not the only reason, no. It's one of them. But I think if you know that they have souls and you've been eating them, I think that's yeah, why are you, yeah, dangerous. Why are you, doing that? you should be a vegan. In fact, you shouldn't because all plants, plants have, have, have souls as well. Too. They have life. And, so you're damn and bad. they have medicinal effects. No, it's all, it's all like the life force of the earth. Each, we go back into each other. Each one, teach one. This is what God provided for us. It's not, it's not a bad thing that I use that I use the plants of the land or that I use the livestock of the world that God provided. It doesn't make me a heathen or a horrible person either. What are you talking about? Like, what, you, what do you mean? But They're, then us not thinking... It, it's all part of the ecosystem. But everything's, got a, everything's got a purpose in this life, isn't it? You take one thing out of the ecosystem, it can mash it up. The animals, the plants, they're all part of what help us survive. The plants help us breathe with oxygen and stuff like that. Mm. And we and we feed off, off off animals and things like this. That's not... What's that got to do with their soul and, or or the life force in or in, 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 in plants or, or yeah, animals? I feel like, I feel like soul they're, is different, even, man. What's the definition of a soul for you? I don't even really know. So why are you arguing the case? If, if because you I just, know what whatever ha I wouldn't know exactly how to properly define it, but whatever it is, I believe animals have one. That that's what, all right. <clears throat> this is interesting. So you believe you have one? Yeah. And you believe a dog has one? Yeah. What differentiates the <laughs> <of> one? <laughs> you from a dog? 
Well, what's the salt? What's that? Don't my, my, pos- soul. Possible said, thumbs. Most of them have souls. Thumbs, thumbs. All right, thumbs. now the features of the animal. This, you asked me what's the difference between men and dogs. Go I'll on. give you one. I just gave you a small one. Thumbs. And then oh. you have thumbs, animals don't. Animals and dogs don't. don't. You just asked me. I just gave you one. Yes. Excuse me, wait. So you, so how you, so wait, the difference between you and a dog's soul is that you have you thumbs. You never asked me about the difference between me and a dog's soul. He what asked did you me ask? the different, differentiate between me and a dog, and I did. I told him, I have thumbs. Okay, so then do you have the same soul that a dog has? Everybody's souls, I'm guessing everybody's souls different. Some people got dark souls in there. <laughs> <laughs> Some, do you know what I'm trying to say? I'm guessing all souls ain't equal. Okay, no, but human souls and animal souls. Just forget the, forget the extra people in there. Just human souls and animal souls. This is souls. God's work we're talking about, you know? This is actually God's work we're talking about. No, because I don't understand the differential what you're trying to do. No, it's a simple question. You're saying... I'm any saying, less, you're saying... You're this is, what's this the, like? Rel- what's this? Race? It's not racist. What's the word we're looking for? What is this? I don't know. Soulism? You're going to make something up. <laughs> soulism. Gonna make, this is soulism. What are we but doing But you're here? fighting for the rights of animals having souls, right? And that's fair. Okay. But I'm saying then, I'm asking you as a soul believer, right? Yeah. What is the difference between a human soul and an animal soul? Is it is it different? Do you think it's different then? Slightly, nah. But that's why, oh, so these would be poachers. Hmm? You don't think less of animals because they don't even have no soul. That's why you can just cut them out, cut them down in the street and take their tusks for ivory and thing. This is what you don't believe, right? This is... No, you are kind of No, 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 no. This must you, be where we're going. No, 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 no. You don't do the same thing we do. You would kill animals because you don't no care. You don't care about them. You don't care about them. They have no soul. Even though you know you're you consuming them. Soul. Can you imagine, Brent? I have no problem because I don't think they they have souls. That's the only reason why you even if it is that they did. I don't think I have a problem either. <laughs> <That's laughs> me neither, yeah. but that's what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 but tell me something. Does every living thing have a soul for you? Every living thing. If it was created by our Lord, then I'm 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 saying there's some so type from, of there's something in there's something in there. From isn't the it? plants to the worms to the insects. Yeah. You think worms have souls? Unless you think mm. the devil made the insects or something. Like like no, but God it's can make God's his soul work. Lesser. Like, yes. So because God has created it, it has a soul. Essentially. So the entire planet has a soul. Now we get okay. Because it's a living thing. That's right? where you're drawing the line. <laughs> no, this is just to be a work of joke. And how about the things that were created that wasn't of God? Does that mm. have a soul? Mm. Well, something mm-hmm. that got created that's not of God. All right, cool. Who created it? Man created it. Let's say man created it. Didn't know. Interesting. So there are soulless beings walking about. Like, for example, when man decides that they're going to recreate this embryo thing with Jiggy and they're able to just... IVF, you're talking about? I don't think so. Because that's just (laughs) plucking something from here and plucking something from here. You're not really creating anything. You're just... Okay. Conjoining it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fact, you may not believe that man has created anything that is alive anyway. It's How about good, uh, AI? Does that have a soul? No. All right, cool, cool, cool. Not yet. I <laughs> said not yet. All right, cool, cool. I don't, right. I don't right, know where the yet comes into. My theory that obviously when the fallen angels were mixing human DNA with animal, animal DNA and blah, 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 there were different creatures created that God did not create. Do they, do they have souls? You said God didn't create them? No, God no. didn't create them. No, no, no. Interesting. So they're running around soulless. Potentially. But they're still alive. Yeah. Interesting. So it's not that they're alive, that they have souls. As you just said just now, you just admitted it. They don't have to be soulful if they're alive. So dogs and whatnot, they can Ma- be alive. But not beasts. But not have souls. That, okay, I can so see that. Your your parameter um, uh, of whether they have soul or not is whether God created it. Kind of. So God is the only habit of soul giving. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God didn't give it to you. How do you have yeah, a soul? Right? Right? Yeah. But you're running around like all the other ones that have souls. Who could tell the difference, right? That's why I asked the question. What's the difference between you and a dog? <laughs> Couple of thumbs. <laughs> okay. Uh, how, was, um, how was the Sunday? I w- really wanted you to give me a little recap. Yesterday was good, you know. Yesterday was good. I didn't know Ethan was your cousin. Mm-mm. Yeah, he is. Oh, so he's just running around seeing that now. No, you see? I was. Not, I, <laughs> yeah, don't, get the camera off me. <laughs> no, man, I, 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 so I tuned in the live on the way on the way in. Ah, uh, okay, good. Mm. Just, just you know, make sure just see. see was what I right? See what in was my, going on. Um, 
um, analysis of, of the, the three barras that were in here. That what? Does that remind you of Black Rob? <laughs> 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 I hear where you're coming from. <laughs> yesterday was sick. Yesterday was different. I think the levels was up. Um, there was a kid. One of the one of the, one of the contestants broke their foot, broke their leg, got run over and crushed up or something like that. Oh no! Yeah, so someone had to someone had to jump on. And he what, at the show? No, no, before no, he got there. Before he got there, but oh. he jumped on with like five five days notice or something like that. So, and he did well. Yeah, he done he done well. Sick. He done well. I was worried. I was worried like what it was going to be like or whatever, but he done really well. So that was good. Um, your cousin, your t- your cousin was cooking. Killed in it, my neck. Yeah, your cousin, your cousin was definitely cooking. He was doing his thing. But the night didn't go all his all his way though. Ooh. The night did, the night didn't go all his way. Who is he facing? He he, he him and smiles. Smiles. Oh my goodness. Smiles is on wickedness, you know. Smiles, smiles he is was sitting there confident. He's, really. he's confident for a reason. <laughs> was that the other guy you were talking about? Yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Smiles smiles is confident for a reason. Efton thought he was having his way with the whole place, mm. and him and Smiles was the last battle of the night. Mm. Oh, is that okay? Mm. And Smiles said to him, "No, yeah." <laughs> first of all, yeah, Smiles was like, first of all, he just he just walking around there, just doing what you want. Mm. You know what I'm say? Mm. There's a there's a there's a battle, boy. Right, there's, there's a battle. I said, "Woo, mm. it was good." You get me? The levels was up. Good, it was good, good. it was all right. It was good, man. It was good. That's really good. Definitely. What oh, about that guy from Birmingham who is half Indian? He's not. His dad's a German, he's black and white, Driz. So he's not even Indian. He's not Indian, no. That is funny how he just lets people keep saying that. But they, <laughs> because we, there's, no, there's nothing he could do because they're just gonna pile on. Said, just pile on. Imagine, you know, one time he said he said nigger staged, and the crowd went, "Whoa!" whoa <laughs> <laughs> they, <laughs> I thought they was gonna start throwing tomatoes at him. Like, you know what? You know what? So you know what? So, the only thing I'm pissed about yeah is that it doesn't translate on the YouTube yeah, yeah. how crazy <laughs> thing was going in the building. I was like, well, and I was busting up because he lost the crowd. <laughs> You get me? Because he was like, he was on something he was in his setup and he was like, obviously Dave's been saying that he, he's Asian from, from a couple of battles ago, innit? From when he said, he said, um, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said um, N-word, innit? Mm. And we put a clip up, we clipped up so it's gone viral, innit? Because people mm. in the comments are going mad. Why is they giving permission to say the N-word? This is what's wrong with our culture. You know, mm-hmm. rah, rah, rah. Just going crazy, innit? But obviously... Rah, 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 rah. All that no, <laughs> just, All that crap. All that crap. But he's a mixed race, innit? His dad's Jamaican, innit? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm trying to say? So obviously, whatever, we're letting it slide, boom, 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 boom. But then now they keep, the boys keep bringing it up in the battle, innit? Like... And then he's brought up all talking about it. he said, Oh yeah, nigga, please, my dad's blacker than you and all this. Like yeah. he was saying this to man. So there's bare things been going off. In the live show, he tried to draw <laughs> down a marker to let people know, nah, me and this word is one. You mm. get me? He tried to say something, I can't remember what he said, and he went like, nigga, please. <laughs> 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 it's like the music went <laughs> everybody in the crowd stopped bouncing went what? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> and they try to run him off stage but fair play to him yeah he didn't stop rapping yeah, yeah. like he didn't skip a beat you oh, get same, me same. he just kept going he just powered through it you get me that's why afterwards I had to make a little disclaimer I was like listen listen no racist was formed in the, in the making of this movie. I rate him, you know, because he's able to flip between different flows and still keep, like, latched onto the beat. Yeah. And um, I don't think I've ever heard him stumble yet. I don't think I have either. He done one where he, like, he faked it. Yeah. He done the, he done the fake stumble. Yeah. And I don't know... I don't think it hit properly. Yeah, you get me? Because yeah, I think yeah. it might have confused some people. Might have thought yeah, that, yeah. but I don't think he, I don't think he has either. Yeah. He's kind of cold. They're getting better, man. They're getting good. Yesterday's yesterday's crop was yes, yesterday's crop was proper. That's bound to happen. They're very young right now, right? And yeah, yeah, yeah. the more they hone their craft and get into the whole franchise of what you're building, they're bound to get better. Yeah, the ones that are smart, the ones that are learning, the ones that are watching. Highest taking highest yeah. guy down the day. Yeah. You get me. Yeah. Might be able to make some tweets to help like manipulate the crowd yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that next guy is he was probably the the forerunner of that particular style. Um, and I really like how he kind of raps or battle raps, but he puts comedy in it. I can't remember what his name is. Um, he had a weird haircut until Izzy 
just put one of those ballys on. Um, Ren. 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 Ren does yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. Ren does that. Ren yeah, has yeah. the crowd eating at the palm yeah, of his yeah, hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, he obviously said, this needs to be a production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I know that I'm here to entertain them. And once I entertain them, I win. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. His, his rapping is not really as... Yeah, forget all the yeah. intricate lyrical miracle yeah, yeah, nonsense. Yeah. I just need to be clear, Precisely. concise, yeah. and hit with them. Yeah. Yeah. And you're screwed. Yeah, yeah. I like I like that, knowing full well that it's a it's an entertainment piece right now. And that's what F done done yesterday. Okay. That's what F done done yesterday. F done was moving that range yesterday. He was had that crowd eating out of palm of his hand yesterday. Then you know smiles is like, hmm. Yeah. Now it's my turn. Yeah. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. When's it coming up? Sorry, when's the early access? <sighs> How can I get the early access? One ninety nine or something like that. Is that on YouTube? Yeah. yeah, yeah All right. Yeah. And when is that coming up? It'll drop before oh, I'll have to work it out, but it'll drop, yeah. it'll drop before it drops. Because we we I think we had we would have had a break this week, innit? So we would be ready to go. I think we should be ready to go from Wednesday for battles. It should be battles should be dropping this week, and then we'll just have just one a week. Mm. Until whenever, you get me. Looking forward to it, man. <clears throat> yeah, no, it was definitely good, I'm man. Sign up expeditiously. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Anybody else that wants to sign up as well? Don't be don't be shy, man. Don't be shy. Sorry about um abruptly thing I need to fix my alarm as well you know I need to buy one of them ones that go on the side of the bed that's, that's just <laughs> an alarm <laughs> yeah that you just hit because I have i don't know it's, it's becoming an excuse not a reason now yeah mm -hmm. but I've either slept through my alarm or it's not gone off too many times since the turn of the year and it's not making sense to me I need a purpose built just like a just like a high, like a fire alarm thing I'm going to get one it wasn't late on purpose. I knew I was only going to have a couple of hours sleep or whatever, but I was prepared for it. Mm. You get me? So when I got up, I was like, huh? But anyway, man to man tired, man to man sleep. You know how it goes. Quick quick, quick um, question before we move on, yeah. Central C. Mm -hmm. Where's he from? What area? No, as in country and ethnicity, you know. England? <laughs> in, in the chat, people are saying he's Guyanese and white, or he's Guyanese and Chinese. He could have, I'm guessing he's got a son in there, isn't it? Yeah, but you lot don't mean like half black, though, innit? Anyway, we'll get into this another time. Um, yes. Morning. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. There, there wasn't much else to it, to be fair. Um, Likewise, you smell great. There wasn't. There wasn't much else. The only thing I, I guess I'll mention is uh, the, 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 the three countries: Niger, Burkina Faso, and Mali have called ECOWAS's sanctions. Sanction strategy illegal and grounds for their decision to leave the block immediately without abiding by um, usual withdrawal terms. So yeah, um, Equus are trying to get them back in the fold, but um, we'll see what happens. I'll keep you guys um, updated. But that's it for um, the headlines. Time to pay the bills. All right, let's get into some word on road. <laughs> He's mixed. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not accepting it. Morning. Morning. You're right. Morning. Okay, so word on road. There's a lot that happened over the weekend. Honestly, I'm, I can't even lie to you. Part of me can't be asked to do all of this. But anyways, so Bad Bunny, the he's a reggaeton artist, I believe. Basically, he had a, a show entrance and he decided that he was going to go in on a real horse. Like an actual, actual horse. Gosh. So anyways... Of course, as one, as people who support animals with souls, <laughs> is it Peter? They you, called him up. Well, uh, are we going to yeah, make this a thing? I said, I said, no, what, I said. I'm gonna, okay, cool. I'm going to keep bringing this up I, because this no, is crazy. You look can't make me feel. This is crazy. This no, is going to be a returning theme. The people that Peter don't eat animals, the year. Huh? Not eat, they don't eat animals. They support animals' rights all the way through. They don't pick and choose when it's they the, want to. Eat. It's the circle of life. <laughs> no, is that right? Anyways, they wouldn't argue the same thing. Have you seen Lion King? Yes, <laughs> you egg. <laughs> yes, I have. So what, is Simba some type of villain? No, but that's different though. Yeah, but he, well, I mean, he had a dark, he had a dark energy. No <laughs> 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 one said dark soul. <laughs> he was darkness. But, um, <laughs> but basically, yeah, he went into, he used a real horse. I don't know, that's so dangerous though. Because what if, because with horses, when you're driving and you see a horse, you need to slow down because any abruptness, mm -hmm. they can go crazy. So how on earth are you going to have a concert and be on a horse? Like, aren't you scared? Because people were screaming, obviously, as they would. Mm. Boy, anyway, they basically posted him and they said, using a prop, 
Using a horse as a prop for your tour is cruel and irresponsible. The horse, the fans, or you could have been hurt, which is very true. Um, they said, why did you think, at Bad Bunny, why did you think it was a good idea to expose a horse to the noise, lights, fog, and screams of thousands of people? The horse looks stressed and clearly doesn't want to be there. That's so funny. Please do not, <laughs> please do not include animals in your shows. They want to live, live in peace and not be used for your spectacle. Yeah, that's so dangerous, you know. That horse, that could have gone so left. But anyway, so yeah, he's getting cussed out. But he gets cussed out regularly anyway. This is what happens. Um, also, Simon Cowell looks very different now. But you know what it is about people that look different? Sometimes you can't criticize because you don't know what people are going through. Mm. He could have an illness. Do you know what I mean? You just don't know. Where is that now? <laughs> God damn. See, I was going to say, can we put a picture up? But then when you said he might have an illness, I thought, oh, okay, actually, let's just... I mean, we can still put a picture up, to be let's fair. Be, let's be, yeah, but let's be mindful, man. Yeah, we can put a picture up. But that's a real test of your mindfulness. Mm. Seeing the picture and not reacting how you think you should or you, you know, want to. You know, another thing is as well, yeah, sometimes when these people do work, yeah, yeah. you have to bear in mind people are getting old as well. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I think the age, the age and thing as well yeah, it's added to that it. as well. So, Because to be honest, when I, so basically he was on Anton Dex's um, show, right? Mm -hmm. And when he walked out, I can't, like, he even looks, not weird walking out, but he doesn't look like... You see how people say like Simon Cowell, he's just like, oh, this tough guy. Mm -hmm. He doesn't look like that. Mm. Do you get what I mean? Even the way he was walking. So I'm just like, y'all might want to take it easy on the man anyway. But anyways, um, yeah. yeah fans that, that's, just, so, that's just some um, plastic surgery, right? Well, who knows why he got the plastic surgery though? Because, but then again, his body language and the way he was walking, he's like, so you know how he's got like a long torso and like, little legs, short legs? Sorry. Yes, his body is very weird, but it was his arms. His arms weren't really moving properly. Okay. So I, I don't, I feel like he might, I don't know. I don't know, obviously, I'm, I don't know if he's got an illness, but I don't think it's as, he just wanted to get plastic surgery because he had nothing better to do with his money. Because mm. he was walking weird, for lack of a better word. Do you feel like th there could be some I think there could be, because it was his hands. Like his hands were not, it was like he could only move one hand at a time. Wow. It was very weird. It was very, very weird. But um, yeah, so basically, fans are talking about how he's got a frozen and scary face and whatnot, and I just think he's out of order, man. But basically, Stephen Merchant. Oh my god! Remember that one on the far right? That's yeah, he's, I mean, yeah, he's gone yeah. through a different thing because there was times where he his face was like really, really um like puffy exactly. looking. Yeah. I think there's something going on there, man. I think there could be something going on there. But um, yeah, so Stephen Merchant, who's also on the show, kind of joked about Simon not. Daily Mail are so rude for that. Very yeah. rude for that. They're I've so never rude. Seen this before. They brought it I've up. Let, they introduced it. <laughs> They're so rude for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so rude. But he basically joked and said that, um, I think they said something about something about Simon, da, 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 and they're like, oh yeah, that me then he said something like, yeah, me and Simon are very alike. Well, except my face moves. Okay. And I they were like, Keep <laughs> they were stunned. <laughs> and then he was like, he anyways. Oh, you're he's right. Simon. He might be like Sorry, 60, Esther, though, from the walking stuff. Look, okay, good. Look at him. So see? Like one arm moves at a time, then that one stops. That, the left arm ain't moving. Yeah, like, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, Maybe he had a stroke or something, actually. For him. Mm. Sad one. And even like the way he shook them and like hugged them, it was very weird. It wasn't like, um, yeah, it was very weird the way he hugged. He actually hugged them and stuff as well. But yeah, man, big up someone, Kyle, man. You don't even know what people, are going, what people are dealing with. Also, Persia, did you guys ever watch Girlfriends? Yeah, I used to. <clears throat> Would you be here for a girlfriend's reboot? You know what? I'll, I'll give it a try. It's not, you're as, not, you're as long as like all of them. It's not by force. <laughs> See, that's the thing. So basically, Persia White, who was mm -hmm. Lynn, mm -hmm. was she was at the um, studios where they recorded um, what's it called, girlfriends, mm -hmm. and she said, "Hello, girlfriends. Just got out of a meeting with Kelsey Grammer, who is the one who created yeah. girlfriends, on the Paramount." Um, hold on. Oh, I'm here now. Okay. <laughs> um, so she said, um, just had a meeting with Kelsey Grammer on the Paramount Pictures lot. Good thing I'll brew in. Da, 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 da. And then I think she like tagged the other girls and then whatever, whatever. But I'm real with you. If, I, if I'm going to say girlfriends, this is the wrong girlfriend that delivered this message. If a girlfriend's show is going to come back, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to say Lynn on there. She used to get to my damn nerves. No, she has to be there, don't I? Oh, she gets to my nerves. What a bum. That contrast. 
Oh, do you know what I hate is when she dated that that English guy. I can't remember his name. Those I scenes, know. I used to skip those scenes. He was like this rock star. And what was his name again? I can't remember his name now. Finn. Was it Finn? Was it Finn? Can't remember. Can't remember. But basically, she dated this, this guy that was like a rock star and whatnot. But she was just a fool for the guy. It was just, it didn't make sense. It just didn't make sense. It was just a, he was a loser. She was a loser. I just didn't understand. I don't know, man. I don't know if I want to see, if she's who I want to see back on the show. But anyways, so who knows? There might, there may or may not be a show. I think let's just do a movie yeah. and call it a day. And I then see. obviously Tony and Joan should make up and then get to see all of them. I don't want to see Joan Desperate again. I can't live through that. And then, yeah. And then they're all like, you know, in the elements doing whatever they want to do. But I don't know about a new season, like a series. Mm. So I'll just leave on a high. Just go out. Go out swinging, mm-hmm. I guess. But yeah, so that happened over the weekend. And obviously, I talked about Wendy Williams last week as well. Um, a lot about Wendy Williams. So her show, Ed, or the show, it's well, the documentary, the Lifetime documentary, is called Where Is Wendy Williams? And it showed, it aired on Saturday and on Sunday. I haven't caught the Sunday one because I'm over in the UK, so I'm probably going to see it today. But it's basically four episodes, and essentially, I remember saying last week that the show was meant to, was meant to essentially document her big comeback into the industry, into media and whatnot. But then, whilst they were filming, the producers of the show realized there was something going on with her beyond the surface, and it was weird because from the show coming out, obviously, we're seeing Wendy in a very, very vulnerable moment. Like anyone who watches Wendy knows that you will never see that woman without a wig. We've seen her on TV without a wig, so. It just shows how bad... I know it sounds very superficial, Mm -hmm. but it really shows how bad things are kind of thing. Um, And there was a lot of conversation about whether she's been exploited in her situation where she can't... Where she's like... Her health is bad. She's got Graves' disease. She's got... um, As I said last week, she's got aphasia. She's also got um, dementia. Like She's got a lot of... Obviously, she's also battled with alcoholism. So she's got a lot of stuff going on. Her, Her bank decided to put in... To stop giving her... Basically put a stop in her account and basically decided that they were going to give her a guardian. And so she's got this stranger who she does not have a clue. The bank basically gave her a third or petition for the court to give her a third party guardian. She's not with her family and whatnot. It's a whole thing, basically, she's dealing with. So there was a lot of conversations about whether the show is actually exploiting her or if it's actually doing any good. Um, but watching the show, you can tell that the producers, I feel like... I don't think the producers of the show are as bad as they initially looked when the trailer came out because they are genuinely worried. Like, there's times where they would just be filming with her and they would call like the people that meant to be, like, the people that look after her, like her assistant or whatever, and be like, something doesn't seem right with Wendy, da 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 And she cries a lot in it, but she's really, she's dealing with so much. It's, it's so sad to see, basically. But before the show premiered on Friday, so on Friday, show premiered on Saturday, on Friday, her former lawyer actually put a clip out and said that this was Wendy. So the picture, the video of Wendy he put out was Wendy looking very healthy. Look Like she looks how she typically looks. And he essentially, let me get exactly what, um, actually is it a woman or a man? I never know now. Hold on. Uh, Sorry, oh, one second. I actually don't know. But anyways, so the former lawyer basically said, I wait this, put a video up of Wendy and you can hear her talking to Wendy like from the back of the camera and whatnot. And Wendy looks very healthy. She doesn't look as skinny as she looks now. Doesn't look like... Re- she just looks healthy, mm. basically. And oh. they said, I weighed, th- I weighed this decision for a very long time. I have kept silent because I have been threatened with physical and financial harm. But I just couldn't keep silent any longer. While Wendy was in Miami with her son. So the film... So I think the documentary is filmed in, in New York. Before that, she was in Miami for a while when she was dealing with all the things that press knew about. And when she was with her son and her nephew and her family, essentially she was really thriving. Like she was doing a lot better health-wise. They basically kept an eye on her, blah, blah. But then when Wells Fargo, which is her bank, decided to tell the court that she needs a guardian, essentially what Britney has, basically, mm. what Britney had, mm-hmm. they basically also said that her son, they kicked her son out, essentially, as in like her son can't see her, nothing like that. They're basically saying that her son has been spending her money, but then that's not the reality. Because mm. he was like, I'm, he was like, I would never spend my, like. I've never spent my mum's money without her permission and blah, blah, blah. And mm-hmm. he was like, my mum is, she, my mum lives lavish. So mm-hmm. she doesn't, her bills are not going to be like everyone else's bills or whatever. But also the guy, he's a college student, but he spent a lot of time kind of taking care of her. Because he's the only child. 
And anyone that watches when they always, she's always talking about like everything she has is for her child, is for her child, for her child. So it was just sad that obviously, you know, they managed to kick him out and whatever. But anyway, the lawyer said, the former lawyer said, while Wendy was in Miami with her son, I would often witness candid moments of their mother and son dynamic. I could tell that he loves his mother so much and you can see the feeling was mutual. You can clearly see the difference between Wendy's well-being during her time here in Florida with her son, caring for her, and her lack thereof in New York in New York under this guardianship. These Wendy's are not the same. How did her health deteriorate so quickly? And why isn't her only child allowed to be by her side? She wasn't like that when he cared f- when she when he cared for her, asked the hard questions. I took this I took this video literally two weeks before Wendy was court ordered to return to New York to respond to a guardianship petition filed by her bank. Let that sink in. My mother passed away. Sorry, her mother. No, her, sorry, the lawyer's mother. My mother passed away on October 1st, 2022 from complications related to ALS diagnosis. And I feel so blessed and grateful that I was able to spend every second that I could with her before she left this earth. If Wendy's diagnosis is true, now more than ever, her son should be allowed that same grace. He deserves it. And most importantly, Wendy deserves it. It's true, man. Like, it's just... It's all a shame because it just it looks as though she's been isolated from her family and from the people that actually know best and can take care of her for the people around her because they're all on a payroll. So essentially, they're all being paid. Mm-hmm. And if you're being paid, essentially, you guys are taking this woman's money. Like, it's just, it's, it's just not right, man. But apparently, that is reviewed every year. But I'm hoping that all of this will... Like, it was, I don't know. I just hope it will bring about some kind of something. Cause it's mad, like her, that like she's got a living. Her mum di- died as well. She's, she's been for a lot, man. Her mum died as well, so her dad is alive. But then she's got siblings as well. Her siblings don't really see her. That like they're not allowed. Her family is not allowed to care for her. It's all very weird. And the people that care for her are strangers. Yeah. And it's like, how are they going to care for her properly, if they don't know her? Do you get what I mean? It's all it's all a mess anyway. But that's what's happening on Wendy's um side of town. Uh, also, there's been rumours over the weekend. These Stan accounts here, I just... I would never... Anyway, whatever. Basically, the Ella and Ty scans... Um, scans. Stans, as in Ella and Ty from flipping Love is... Not Love is Blind. What's that one called? Love, Love Island. Island. Yeah. Basically, they're trying to put... They're putting two and two together and saying that they think they've broken up and this, that, and other, and they've unfollowed each other. I don't know how people know that people have unfollowed each other. Like, someone just sitting there refreshing every day and to just catch... Tapping, just tapping the name. Yeah, but it's like whenever they report it, they're like, oh, they just unfollowed each other. So you sit in the refreshing. No, you know what would happen? They'll see your, that if I see pictures of your man disappear, isn't it? Yeah, but why are you on the couch so much? They're going to go, hmm, <laughs> and then go to your Some following, game, right. type, in, type in your man's name, see it's that you're not there. following it, and then they're going to say, oh, yeah, trouble in paradise. Yeah, but I mean, to be honest, it's been trouble since they went in the villa, so I don't know why everyone's acting shocked. They lasted pretty long, though. No? Yeah, but I feel like all the. I, I feel like this, this, the time they've lasted, I never really, with Love Island, I never count that as true time. It's contractual time. Yeah. Typically, after these kind of months is when you know who's really lasting and who's not. He ain't lasting. He's going to need his day in the sunshine anyway. He went down, had all that TV <laughs> and he ain't had a chance to like celebrate. Yeah. Well, you know what they say? Can't change a, was it leopard doesn't change the spots or whatever, whatever they say in this court. But anyways, they're out here posting pictures talking about focus. She's talking about she's focused. He's talking about never let a hard time humble us. Talking about, I don't care. So that's what's happening. But for anyone who cares, I guess, all the best. Um, also, Marcel and Marcel for Love Island. Mm-hmm. So basically, right, um, Ray Shuman's, is it, yeah, Ray Shuman's mother's child, no, child's mother. No, Ray Shuman is a group, right? Mm-hmm. One of them, Slim Jim. Yeah, one of them, their child's mother has exposed Marcel's wife for allegedly cheating on Marcel with one of the Rays. Well, Ray or Sherman, one of them. And basically, yeah. she exposed sex. But you know what I hate here? Because I don't like cheating in this. I'm, I'm, I'm pro. I think people need to cheat to be shamed. They're not shamed enough. That's why we're where we're at as a society. However, I just hate that sometimes with women, like, Whenever you're doing something, like a man can be found in the center of it. So she's basically exposing her, not because she's standing up for truth, but because it's to do with her baby's father. But who's Marcel's girl? Is she like high profile? She's a wife. She's married and all sorts. Is she out here? No, I don't know. So where did Slim Jimmy find her? <laughs> well, through the text. Oh, I don't know. I don't know, actually. 
Is she like a is she like in in She's the street really a party girl? Like I don't think so. I've never seen her. Her name's Rebecca Vieira. What does Marcel do? He was on Love Island. Yeah, but what's he do now? Like, how does this girl get got? Like, how... <laughs> like I'm saying, like, what are like, we, what, like, what are we doing here, basically? Like, how maybe does this she's happen? actually, uh, I couldn't find her profile, but maybe she's an uh, influencer or something. I don't know. Okay. But sometimes you do have to, I do wonder how people get together. I'm like, how did you guys find each other? So random. This is random news to me. Yeah, but basically, she posted her story, so she's deleted it now. I, I don't know how people do stuff like that as well. Stand on business. <laughs> let, let the 24 hour exp- expiration time hit. Don't be out here deleting, posting, deleting stuff. But she basically said, um, s- some men have to watch who they marry and lie down with too. You're marry and settle down for the money and stability. She said, cheating on your husband with my son's dad is crazy. Because if he's not your man, why are you in it? Oh, anyway. it's just her baby daddy? Yeah. So it's not because it's her man or anything. I hate when I find women at when I hate when I find men at the bottom of women's foolishness. Anyway, she goes, cheating on your husband with my son's dad is crazy. Especially after being in my DMs trying to link with me and be cool. Nasty work. Okay. I guess she was like, like, so she basically showed like text messages between them. They're out here sending each other gifts and whatnot. You know, that's serious when you're sending gifts. She said, mind you, this girl at Rebecca Vieira was messaging me about a year ago, telling me she was there for me and she was so sorry for what I was going through and what we had to link. <laughs> I'm sorry. And that we had to link our kids. A few months later, when me and him split, my son's dad told me she popped up on him in London. Oh, she popped up on him at his London show and she was upset that he wasn't choosing her. This was last May, mind you. She was like three months freshly married at the time. Mad he wasn't choosing her. Then she said, Marcel, I hope you signed a prenup. It's a whole thing, man. I, I hope that Marcel was okay. That's that's what I care about. Because finally coming, to, coming to find out your partner has been cheating. I said something about Marcel. I reported something about him not too long ago. I don't think it was marital issues. Is he the Blazers squad you? Yeah. yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember what did I report on. I remember he was on Word and Road not too long ago. But anyway, it's a hard day, man, for him. I hope he's all right. Love and light to him and stuff. Also, what got the streets in um, a shocker over the weekend is that Portia Williams, <laughs> Portia, <laughs> Portia is basically no, it was a Friday. This happened. Portia is has filed for divorce from Simon Gabardia. Anyone doesn't know. I actually talked about her last week. Bigging her up, you know, for mm-hmm. how she... Um, I mean, that's still right, because he, yeah, he's better looking because of her. That I mean, facts don't change. But basically, essentially, Portia was a Real Housewives of Atlanta cast member. She introduced this other girl in there called Fallon. And so Fallon was like a friend of the show. But essentially, that's, with reality TV shows, that's how it happens. You can't just... If they're going to bring a stranger in, they kind of get someone to be like, okay, say that's your friend and that's mm. how the person come in. But obviously, as the viewers, we're seeing that as Fallon is Portia's friend. So there's that. Anyway, at the end of the season, Fallon and her husband, Simon, are getting a divorce. And then in the same month, Portia and Fallon's hu- ex-husband are saying they're together. And then Portia loves very quick and hard. So the month after that, they were engaged. They were engaged after a month. Of being together, they had a whole fabulous. They had like a whole fabulous wedding. She's she's a Nigerian girl at heart. There, because sis she, sis played the part of a Nigerian wife. Everything dances and also it was a whole thing. And they've been together essentially for fifteen months. But basically, she announced I think two weeks ago. I reported on it that she's coming back to Real Housewives of Atlanta. She hasn't been back since the whole quote unquote taking somebody's man because she knew the girls were going to cook her and sis was not going to play that game. So she announced the other day that she's coming back and she was like, oh, you know. It's funny though, actually seeing that video now because in the video she was like, is Portia Williams coming back? No, but Portia Gabardia, which is her husband's name, is coming back. Cool, whatever. Anyways, now. But then at the same time, so after she announced he was coming back here, then reports came out that apparently he's an illegal immigrant in America. <laughs> I'll read you these man, this man's alleged offense. I say alleged. It's a 13-page um, court document that details his situation. So here we go. He first came to America, to, came, came to the States in 1982, August of 1982, right? He had a six-month visa. He overstayed his visa, right? In 1985, he, so he didn't, between that time, he had applied for citizenship. 1985, his application was denied and he was declared deportable. So he, then he voluntarily left the States, right? Yeah. That's in 1985. In June 1986, he came back. To the country mm-hmm. and again overstayed his six-month um visa right 
Um, and then he was deported in 1992. Mm-hmm. So, but between 18, 1986, when he second time he came back, and 1992, when he was deported, mm-hmm. he had applied for temporary resident status. Also, this is his third marriage. Mm. Did not know that the first marriage, obviously, he was hoping to get a green card out of it, didn't work. But they're not been together for like twenty years and whatnot. But what if you about Nigerian men? They can they commit to the act, so that's not really no. Nah, that's neither there nor there. Um, so basically, between nineteen eighty six and nineteen ninety two, he applied for uh, what's it called a visa, something else, right? A visa or whatnot. However, though, he applied with someone else's identity. So now we're doing identity theft. Oh, serious? Yeah. So that happened. Um, between that time again, he basically got deported again. But when he got deported, when he and when he was deported and back in Nigeria, his application for the using someone else's identity got approved. So guess what? He came back. <laughs> he came back again. <laughs> then when he came back again now, obviously he's now got the temporary visa, right? So he then said to them, like, okay, how do we make can we basically make this permanent? But they were like, be fucking for real because this is not even you. Mm-hmm. So you're trying to follow one from this application, but this current application is not you anyway, basically. So that was um, that was essentially rejected. Essentially, quite a long story short. Oh, between that time as well, he was also um, arrested or charged and stuff like that with um, fraud. Money, like financial fraud and business kind of fraud. Um, so yeah, so he's got a lot of charges up against him. So... That report came out the week after the week after Portia had announced that she was going to back on, go back on Real House of Atlanta. Mm-hmm. But I saw it, but I just thought it was probably like rumors and stuff because essentially when you're going to go back on Real House of Atlanta, you need a storyline. So mm-hmm. I just thought, oh, the girls are cooking something up until I then saw the divorce. Here's my theory. I don't think they're actually divorced. I think they're divorced. I think they have to be legally divorced because of the legalities about, around it. Like Portia, she has businesses, all that kind of stuff. So I think it's a thing where, well, I've got two theories to be fair. It's, so it's a thing where either she doesn't want to get her, her assets and whatnot swept up in whatever's going on because mm. it's still a char- charges of fraud, it's identity theft, it's a whole bunch of things. And he is facing deportation for real this time. And I don't think he's going to be able to come back. So either they, they're faking the divorce just for that or she did not have a, she didn't know this is a whole legion situation and she didn't know that she was, this is who she was chilling with or laying with. And so the divorce is probably for real. But he's basically been posting on his Instagram as if nothing's happened. So he's posted a picture of him smiling in the golf cart. And the location is um, him in Costa Rica. Obviously, people have been making jokes saying, oh, well, have you been removed from America already kind of thing? Then he puts another picture with him in the States and whatnot. So that's happened. Then he posted on his story saying that he will stop loving his wife when the divorce is final. Then she posted a, a thing saying, um, thank you for your prayers and support. But then she signed it PW, Portia Williams, not Portia Gabbardia. Yeah, man. I don't know, man. Obviously, there's been a lot of mixed reviews and mixed, um, what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? Reactions um, over the weekend. But because obviously, Portia does, obviously, then there's been a whole thing about, oh, she's just, a, she's a gold digger. She did that. But I mean, she's not poor. So there's that. But I think that, the way she loves, that like she loves hard and whatnot. So I feel like if if it is a case where they are really getting divorced, mm-hmm. it will be because she she feels betrayed knowing that this was going on. And I'll be real with you as well. I'm not moving my life because you've been deported. Mm. Sorry, no, that's that's just got to give. I mean, that happened to another real housewife. Um, what's her name? Is it Teresa? And basically, her man was basically signing her names. Oh, yeah. This is what happens when you just give that like you anyway. The my man, my man, my man community. Read documents, but basically he was basically signing her. He was doing fraudulent things and putting her name on the fraudulent things. And then when it came to court, they were basically like, "We don't believe that you don't you didn't know about these things." So she had to go to jail for a year. Then he went to jail afterwards, and then he got deported because he was an illegal immigrant. Mm. And of she, course, she divorced him and she married somebody else. I think she did longer than a year, you know. Was it? Yeah, I think it was longer. I could be wrong though. Because I think it was one season of the show she missed, and then oh. she ended up coming back. Yeah, she ended up coming okay. back. But anyway, there's all of that stuff coming back. Portia coming back to Real Housewives, I'm sure we will get the tea of all of that stuff. Also, over the weekend, lastly, gosh, this has been a lot. Oh, ciao. Over the weekend, um, Wiley's MB has been revoked. I thought this happened ages ago. I didn't know this was news. I thought this happened ages ago. But apparently, um, what's it called? He's not a role model. 
to society and he's also dishonoring what the MBE is for. Is this one the Queen gives to people? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's there's that. I honestly thought this happened years ago. Maybe they just threatened it. Mm, maybe. But apparently it's officially been revoked. So I'm sure Wiley's having a sleepless night over that. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for me. Cool. Let's get into people's journal. Interview. Oh, get into the interview. All right, we have a special guest with us. <laughs> mm-hmm. <Ready> now. <laughs> we have a special guest with us um, today. Please kindly introduce yourself and what it is that you do. No? Sorry, guys, just. Um... Yes. Yeah, ready? Yeah. Um, yeah, hi. Morning. <laughs> Morning. I'm Shkayla forbes Bell. I am a fashion psychologist, consultant, content creator, and author of the book, Big Dress Energy. Oh, love that. Okay. Big Dress Energy, I love that. How are you, though? I'm good. You guys have me out here in Timbuk, too. Like, in the rush hour. Do you know how long it took me to get here? Did you but drive get the, um... I got the train, but I'm I'm from Wembley, so it's oh, no, you're, you're, you I live have on. never been in these sides before. I didn't even know these sides existed. Really? So, yeah. Wembley, <laughs> Wembley is, West, West is girl. too far, man. Yeah. It's so exactly. far. Exactly. US so... babes don't stand a chance. Yeah, I just, look, it it's took me like far. yeah over an hour forty minutes to get here. Nah, I can so. understand. It's a trip. Yeah. It's a whole trip. But, but I made it. So I thank you. We appreciate it. You know. Really? Geography is important. Find love close to you. No, <laughs> I, said to, I said to someone the other day, and they were laughing. I said, "No, I said I would consider that long distance relationship." What no, east to west? Yes, I'm not doing that. Yeah. That's long. That's, so long. That's a chore. Like <laughs> I can't just see you on a whim. <laughs> Plan my trip. That's a commitment. That's that a will test. Distance. That will test your. Wembley will test your love. It will. How am I doing that? I don't like love. I don't like love that tests it. That gets tested. I like easy stuff. <laughs> well, basically, we have a game that we play with all our guests. It's okay. a general knowledge um, game. Knowledge. Didn't bring okay. your iPad, did you? I was in a rush. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a rush. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's general knowledge, and it's like this or that questions. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! It's not bad, okay. but if you don't know the answer, you can just pass essentially. Oh my god, okay. Yeah, it's all right. It's not bad. Yeah. What's the, yeah? What's happening? Bottom going up. Okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Three. Are you ready? Actually, I, I was yeah. making the stuff. Oh, here. okay. Yeah, I'm ready. Huh? Mm? Oh, that's so sick. Her graphics. I thought I was Meg the Stallion for a second. I get that <laughs> all the time. I so see it. Terrible for you. I agree. <laughs> <see. laughs> Multiple so hard. countries. No, it's nice, but yeah. Take pictures of people. The charge them. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I might start to do it because it's constant. No, I love it. Mate. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you ready? Yeah. Brent, uh, you ready? I am. Start. You just want to start? Okay, you can start. Three, two, one. Name a fruit that exists as either red or green. Strawberry, apple. <laughs> red <laughs> and blue makes what? As in what colour? Purple. Runway fashion or streetwear fashion? Streetwear. What is the name of the British flag? Union Jack. What British uh, rapper acted as Deshane in Top Boy? Oh, Ashley Waters. What is the capital <laughs> of Ireland? Oh, pfft. I don't know geography. I told you, I don't even know where I am right now. <laughs> who is the British? What? Who is the British musician known as the lead vocalist for the band Shade? Or Shade? Shade. Name one country located in the Middle East. You're telling me geography. Middle East. Uh, UAE. Mm. <laughs> what African country speak Somali? Somalia. Vacation or solo trip? Vacation. When I get a baby. Te- television, <laughs> television or newspapers? TV. I'm so confused. Okay, good, because you threw me off with that. Yeah. <laughs> you did really well. <laughs> yeah, for real, you know. Yeah, the only, I think the only one you think is the island one and it's Dublin. Yeah. Oh, Dublin, obviously. Yeah, yeah I'm not Oh, and the fruit one. But yeah. you asked that wrong there. Did I? Wait, what? You did. did you I said okay. a, a fruit that is either red or green, but it should have been exists as red and green. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, okay. see. Okay. Okay. Yeah, apple? you messed me up. Yeah, apple, apple grapes. Grapes. When you said that, I she, said apple, I said strawberry. She said strawberry, and, and then she gave you one for um, 
The mm. other colour oh, as well. Yeah. And green as well, yeah. I mean, you did mention apple, in it? So. I did. Yeah, really, so yeah. That, you you did really apple. well, actually. You, you only be, got one You one. might be leading yeah. the board. Still. I think you are leading the board. I can't <gasps> lie to you. Yay! One, two. Well, depending on how many you answer, to be fair. Yeah, that's what it depends on. Yeah. You said UAE, innit? Yeah. Yeah. Well, even so. Yeah. Yeah, you did really well. Yeah, for, for real, you know. Don't oh, ask a surprise, God. please. <laughs> 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 I do have to, love to add other guests, but... Do they feel? <laughs> I would, no, but I would get zero if I was a guest. So okay. I, hear it. I absolutely hear it. Can you please tell us what fashion, what is a fashion or who is a fashion psychologist? Yeah, so I guess my role as fashion psychologist is looking at the why behind the what when it comes to the way we style ourselves, okay. the way we shop, the way we consume fashion and beauty and mm -hmm. aesthetics. So my journey started with psychology. So I just love like understanding like group dynamics, why people do the things that they do. Yeah. And the more I was getting into it, the more I realized that social psychology was really my bag. And I mm. like to understand like what goes behind a first impression. Yeah. Um, I love style and I used to like be obsessed with the catwalks and the runways, mm -hmm. but I thought there was something deeper than that, but I couldn't really pinpoint what it was until yeah. I was doing my psychology degree. Mm -hmm. And then literally during the third year of my degree, it was 2012, oh God, I'm showing my age. But anyway, it was 2012 mm -hmm. and it was when um, the first iteration of the Black Lives Matter movement happened okay. and Trayvon Martin, mm -hmm. you know, it was murdered and then they had that million hoodie march and then yeah. I started to think about the hoodie as like a symbol. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought it was so interesting. At the same time, you had other like, Silly American pundits saying that, you know, the hoodie is something that young black men shouldn't wear because they'll be seen as aggressive or, yeah. you know, they should be wearing suits and they need to look a certain way. And then I wanted to explore the relationship between clothing, race and impressions. And mm -hmm. I think everything just spiraled from then. And I realized there's a ton of research into clothes, beauty and aesthetics and how yeah. it shapes the way people treat you. It shapes the mm -hmm. way you feel about yourself, how you connect with other people. Yeah. It's like... It's a form of nonverbal communication, right? Like we all mm. say, and oh, we don't judge books by its covers, but we do, we find something um, almost like spiritual about like the way that we adorn ourselves and the way we like show up in the world every mm -hmm. day. And that could either be powerful, it could be a, like a reason to, um, you know, be, be fearful, be connecting to other people. There's just so much that goes into it. And I just talked about it continuously and mm. people just realized that, yeah, this is something they do unconsciously, but never had the language for it. And that's mm. what really fashion psychology is. So like with fashion psychology, what is the, is it to like help people try to understand why they do? And then I guess find, not a cure, but find, uh, well, lack of a better word, cure for like mm. why they dress like that was just to make them just think about it. Like, what is the end goal, essentially? I think it's multifaceted. So from, like, I do work with brands as well. Like, So mm. from a brand side, I'm getting people to understand how to connect with their consumer base on the okay. deeper level, um, how to educate them to, like, sh consume better in a better way, um, how to use, like, psychological, like, tactics within their marketing mm -hmm. um, in order to convey their message across, create that yeah. brand community, like, just, like... Um, project the language of their clothing and their brand okay. but also from a consumer side yeah I'm teaching people to value their clothes I feel mm -hmm. like the more we've got onto this kind of over kind of cons like consumption driven yeah. society people have they don't really care about their clothes like mm -hmm. they don't in the way that they should mm -hmm. um, they just care about aesthetics or like taking it for a picture or yeah. just jumping on a trend and just having something to say it's nothing like deeper we don't really value the way that we're showing up in a more mindful way mm. so in teaching fashion psychology i'm getting people to be more confident in how they show up every day mm. i'm getting people to save money you know mm. thinking about more mindful about their finances and mm. the way that they're spending i'm getting people to you know showcase their best self showcase their identity yeah. you know their likes their dislikes and understand like their community and their culture and how to express that through aesthetics. Mm. I was going to say that that would cross into sustainability as well, wouldn't it? hundred yeah. percent. But I don't think people think about sustainability and psychology being like mm. in the same vein, but it is definitely yeah. true. Like I think with sustainability, people just say like, stop buying clothes, stop buying fast fashion yeah. and like you're killing the planet. But like, what is that really doing to change the way people are shopping? Like mm. you people could only shop sustainable, but then they're doing hauls on like Depop and eBay and they still have too many things yeah. or they're just still like, oh, just getting stuff and being like, oh, I'm just going to give it to charity. Like, no, that's not really sustainable mm. or like you buying something and then not 
tailoring it, like not customizing it, not caring about how mm-hmm. you wash it, not reading the labels, yeah. like all these things, like, or just feeling uncomfortable how you're dressing or every day saying, oh, I have nothing to wear. Like, you know, you need to change the way people approach their style and the way people are thinking Mm -hmm. about it so they're doing it in a more mindful way and Mm -hmm. then that in turn will change their behavior which will cause more sustainable actions like you can't skip that skip the psychology yeah is is there a right or wrong so so like kind of um speaking about sustainability here right um if you were to speak to somebody who was a minimalist who maybe just had two pairs of jeans and two jumpers or whatever it may be Mm -hmm. is that the ultimate ultimate um version of sustainability or do you feel like that's just your version of it. It's not a right or a wrong thing. Yeah, I don't believe there's a right and a wrong. Okay. Um, there are studies that support that people who have like more minimalist wardrobes, they do um, feel better. They've like reported to feel like more content and like having that minimalist lifestyle has made them feel a bit more more secure. And like there are studies that show that overconsumption can lead to like a cluttered mind as well mm. and like connected to your space. However, I definitely don't live a minimalist lifestyle. I think <laughs> you can tell by the way I dress. Like mm. that's not me, but everything I own is so special to me like mm. I rewear my clothes I get everything tailored customized like mm. I have like a personal relationship with my clothes I have clothes from like 10 15 years ago that I still mm. wear I mm. borrow clothes like mm. I wear things that from my mom like from my sister mm. passed away like I just I feel like clothes tell a story and you'll never hear me say oh I have nothing to wear mm. like, never mm. because I have such a strong relationship with my aesthetic mm. and my vibe and that means just so much to me and I feel like that is sustainable see I was going to ask a question that Prior to that question, um, that I thought, you know what, this may seem a bit silly. But I'm glad you mentioned this, yeah. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's not exactly this, but earlier we were talking about the animals have souls, yeah, yeah. And, and plants and living things. Mm-hmm. And I know you're not saying this, yeah. but is it a certain level of, of value on just the existence of clothes? Like, for example, yeah. once cotton is, is woven into a particular jumper, for example, yeah. do you now see it in a different way mm-hmm. to, yeah. like, cotton that's just grown on trees? I think it's more about who's wearing it okay. and the occasion and the memory of the garment rather okay. than just the garment yeah. itself. Okay. Sometimes it can be the garment itself when you're thinking about, okay, like who designed it and what's the mm-hmm. meaning behind the design and like how that was created. And like, um, so for example, I have that value. I attach a high level of value to clothes that's made from black owned brands that okay. I own because I feel like those clothes are reflective of my identity and that person's unique perspective is so similar to me and it connects me to my culture. But when it's maybe made by like a mass market brand, I think more value is attributed to like what you were doing at that time, like who you were with and like the memories that you associate with the clothing. Cause then I feel like those memories and like who you were at that time is woven into the fabric of that piece. So Mm -hmm. then when you wear it, you can almost treat your clothes like a memory box and it can like transport you to that time and it can help you relive those memories. And I think it's especially true for clothes and things of people who've passed away I think sometimes we underestimate the value of things until someone dies and then you realize like well that's so like that style is so significant and so symbolic of that person and you know that was a decision that they made um, and it says something about them and what they valued and what they aspired to be and then it adds so much meaning to that piece of fabric that might have just been hanging in like I don't know Zara like a couple of years before yeah it makes perfect sense to me man so what do you do when the styles change? If you're clinging on to clothes like their memories and holding on for them for a while, but then yeah. they don't fit in. No, well, like yeah, that's just the style changes, so you don't have no use for it. Do you just sit on it until they wait for it to come back in, or do you just wear it, yeah. knowing that you're a decade out of <laughs> <laughs> place? I feel like. For example, like look at jeans, right? How they've changed. So before it was, we were all wearing skinny jeans and then now we're wearing flares. And like, I think for me, when you have that personal relationship with your clothes, you shouldn't care too much about what's in style because you have such a strong bond with that garment and it means so much. Um, yeah, but so you still, why are you looking at me for? You're wearing flares. No, I'm not. Wish it, wish it. <laughs> Sorry, professional, professional. <laughs> Can you let me know if there's a little flare bottom on the bottom of that? What, those what's it? Like, those are like, You wouldn't go. really be wearing that maybe 10 years ago, though, would you? Because of like styles. And that's fine. That's fine. But I think. Okay, yeah, nice. No, 10 years ago, Baggy was in. And then it's got me there left. And then, and then it came yeah, back in it again. Yeah, it did. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I think that just shows like style is so 
it's so cyclical. But you have yeah. to do that with jeans, though. What do you have to do? You have like you can't not you can't not. You see, like um, when they brought in slim fit, when slim fit and skinny fit became more popular, yeah, yeah. Once, once it became the social norm, the 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 baggy jeans were too baggy. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't it doesn't matter. Like you don't want to. There's bare people who didn't want to conform who don't want to scare wear skinny jeans and stuff like that, and that yeah, is yeah. fine, yeah. Mm-hmm. But. Staying the same was too. You looked like a psychopath. Yeah. <laughs> like ev- like the, the the standard, the norm changed. Everybody went in line yep. and yeah. fit. Anybody that was standing around with them big, je- you looked like an actual psychopath. You know what I'm trying to say? So like you had to conform, even if you couldn't go all the way and go full skinny, mm. Mm. you had to streamline it yeah. because of that was just the times, didn't it? You just like a madman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I love that because I think it just goes to show how powerful clothing is in that kind of giving you that social capital. Mm. And I think that's just another way we kind of underestimate clothes. Like you're just saying like you wouldn't be able to belong if you wasn't wearing like a style of jean, yeah. um, which I think is pretty interesting. But then if we get super caught up in that, then again, you're just going to end up consistently buying and throwing and buying and throwing. Um, I still have skinny jeans that I still wear like from time to time and a lot of like my flares now like is from like my mom's like old clothes that she used to wear in the 90s that I've got tailored that I'm wearing now um, and I think it's true we all jump on trends trends help us to connect to like the cultural zeitgeist and like what's popping right now and that helps us to connect with people but um, I think there's ways that we can change up certain aesthetics or change up things that we already own to fit into current trends like right now you know you have like clean girl and quiet luxury and then it was mob wife and then it was mm-hmm. like loud luxury and we have all of these different things but i think people don't are not creative enough with their wardrobe and they don't see how they can like tweak or alter or, like wear things in a different way to help them like fit in with the current trends but still be authentic to their individuality mm-hmm. like, i don't have a tracksuit i don't have a tracksuit like this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is, and, and obviously like you're saying because of the trends and because of the styles that's in this uh-huh. is just in yeah, it yeah. and so, but not because it's in I was just like yeah. I can well I like it. to I ask can, people like why did you guys decide to work. wear that today wear what you're wearing today well well, this particular top um, <laughs> 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 I thought you know what like um, have you heard of the, the, the nation of Islam mm-hmm. okay then so basically today's saviour's day Okay. And so yeah, this I'm just wearing this because this is what the FOI would wear pretty much on, you know. Yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. That's quite meaningful. What about mm-hmm. you, Marks? I was late. Oh <laughs> <laughs> I, I wore it yesterday. <laughs> 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 what does it bring you? How do you feel in it? How do I feel in it? Yeah. I mean, I feel alright, you know. Like I said, it's um it's a different style of tracksuit for me. It's not mm-hmm. my it's 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 not my goal to. I probably prefer the more fitted joints, but I think outside it, of your comfort zone. Yeah, yeah, but I think I think I think it looks cool. I think it look, I think I think it looks alright. I think I make it work. Yeah, but obviously it's different for me as well, though, isn't it? Why? Because I could just make most things work. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. So you got easy. the confidence. Yeah, it's yeah. easy for me. I'm, I wear the clothes. Yeah, the clothes don't really you. Do you feel it? Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Do well, you do you um? There's a question on the screen. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you analyze people based on what they wear when interacting with them? Like, do you profile people based on what they wear? People always ask me that. Like, I'm some kind of fashion psychic, and I don't <laughs> think that's that's not really how it works. I think we all do that. We mm. all look at how someone's dressed and we make that judgment about them. Mm. There's a study that found that people make snap judgments um, within 0.10 seconds of when they see someone. So in that time, no one's introducing themselves. Like you're not getting a feel of someone's vibe. You're literally looking at their face, their outfit. And that's what you're making the judgments off of. And your judgments are going to be based on your like experiences and the things that you are um, reading, the things that you're seeing, the people you're surrounding yourselves with. So I think we all do that. I might just have a bit more nuance into how people respond when they see certain mm. aesthetics. So for example, I know that when people are wearing luxury outfits, people are more likely to see them, that person as being more successful and more intelligent even, and just that people are more likely to like do things for that person when they're wearing luxury outfits. Like studies have proven that time and time again. So that's something like I'll be aware of or 
if someone's wearing like something outlandish and I know that they're probably experiencing a level of escapism and Mm -hmm. they're like feeling a bit more creative and that creativity is making giving them a sense of joy or you know there's I just add that layer of nuance but we all make those judgments like we're all engaging in fashion psychology in one way Mm. or another your your skills yeah do you feel like your skill set is something that everyone should to some degree um try and have yeah i think that's why i created big trust energy because i feel like all of this research was just being kept in these boring academic papers like in jargon that people don't understand but we all wear clothes like we all experience something based on what we're wearing our clothes whether it's because of the brand the style the fit the feel like it's all going to have an impact on the way that we like navigate our day-to-day so we should be aware of that so we can make better choices mm-hmm. and we can use our clothes as a tool for All our right. well-being that's exactly where i'm going with it mm-hmm. like so i guess also for your own for your well-being but also i guess to navigate life like for example in the same way you would it would be beneficial to know how to swim it may be beneficial to know the psychology of what you're wearing so yeah. if you were to go to a, a job interview if you were to to meet somebody on the first date or exactly, whatever. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. exactly what you're trying to yeah what you're trying to achieve exactly. and what you're trying to get like i'll just give you a couple of studies so like for example there's a study that found that hiring managers prefer people to wear like navy blue mm. and like people wearing that was seen as being like more competent and they're more likely to get a job people also prefer others who dress similarly to them especially in work environments um because it's almost like mirroring them and it's that it creates a level of attraction so people mm. like that um, people also tend to listen to other people when they are dressed more formally than them, when they're wearing darker colours. Like These are all li- little tactics and tricks that you can use to kind of help you mould yourself in different environments. And it's not just in work, in, like, in dating, in, like, in like, when you're trying to be fit and healthy, when you're trying to just get out of your comfort zone, like you can dress the part. Mm. Um, and I just think that's so powerful and it's something that we can all do. Do you feel like it can be manipulative though? <laughs> <laughs> not necessarily not, not obviously I guess like most things in life it depends on the person who's using this particular tool or skill right yeah but do you feel like it can go down that route I don't think so because I think we're all constructing like a version of ourselves like I think you guys might think oh you just like threw something on but that is saying like what you're wearing is saying something about you and you're constructing yeah. like a part of your identity through how you're choosing to dress and like present yourself. Mm-hmm. And like, that's a decision that you made whether consciously or unconsciously. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're all doing that. If you're just a bit more cognizant of like the research behind it, I don't think that's manipulative. I just think that's being more informed, but you guys are doing that. You just might not be aware mm. of it. Okay. So when you leave your house, are you intentional about every single thing that you're doing? So yeah. Yeah, so in the really? same way, it's like, okay, cool, I'm going to the shop to get bread. It's like, I'm going out to do this, and this is the best outfit to achieve oh, that. Not when I'm getting bread. Like. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, so, no, in a similar way to how you what go is, out. What does what today's outfit say about you? I think I wanted to, I think I was a bit... Um, I was a bit tired as well. I wanted to be like quite expressive to get my energy up. Um, I feel like... It's a bit comfortable scenario, but I wanted to feel just a little bit creative with it. And I definitely wanted to be comfortable because when you're comfortable in your clothing, your cognition is improved. So your ability to think and like express yourself is better. Mm. I'm not coming here wearing no heels and like tight dress when I'm trying to like express a point and like that's going to distract me. So like it's not just about the aesthetics, it's about the the senses as well and like how mm. your clothes impact that. So that's what I was thinking today. But yeah, when I'm just going out, like to Asda or Tesco, like mm. you won't be, you you won't walk past me. You won't notice me. Like, <laughs> oh, look, absolutely like ridiculous. Like not every day is a sleigh, I have mm. to say. But um, but yeah, I am, um, when I'm going for these like events or when I'm going to speak or for example, I was in Copenhagen last year. I gave a keynote speech and I was, I rented this um, beautiful pink suit to Warren stage and the amount of people came up to me to say I spoke well but mostly because they're like oh my god I love your suit Mm. like I kind of landed a a deal with Calvin Klein like based off of that suit the guy was like I love your suit I love your suit and then it started a conversation and Mm. I feel like clothes can be conversation starters in that way and they're quite powerful and that's happened to me like quite a lot because I can be quite shy but Mm. then I feel like when someone comes up to you and, oh, I love that. Or like it draws the attention to you and then you can like use that to your advantage. So I always say like, yeah, you can mm. dress your way into into greatness. Can, can someone you continue, Manuel? Mm. Just as you're on that, 
the type of lines that Kanye West kind of is seen parading or he puts out one. What, what, what's your take on all that? <laughs> well, his current style and the yeah. way his wife is dressing. Yeah, yeah, talk to us. <sighs> it's difficult. I think obviously he sees himself as like an artist and I feel like that kind of avant-garde style just makes him, I kind of think it, it feeds into that vision that he has of himself. Um, and then in that way that we can see fashion is almost like kind of a protective like shield, I think. I think he's obviously going through a lot of turmoil in different ways but like his fashion and that being known for being like out there and like different and it feeds into that role that he has of this like tortured genius so yeah. i think he likes the fact that we don't get it and he's dressing against the grain um and then again that's that's fashion psychology in itself because it's making him it's, it's feeding into that part of his identity suppose somebody says that you're just not on his wavelength he's too too, too far into the future yeah suppose that's his argument. Like you're not, not you're not ready. Yeah. <laughs> well, then again, then I say he's serving a purpose because not the general population is not dressing like that, and I mm. think he has more like people who disapprove than not. And again, that's what that's what he's all about. Like you're not ready. Like all of his albums, he says, "Oh yeah, you're not ready. You're not on the vibes." And some of his albums have been ahead of its time. So if he's dressing differently, then it's just confirming it. It's confirmation bias, yeah. right? Yeah. The kind of um, slippers that he normally makes, right? Yeah. I would have sworn that nobody would wear them. You know, yeah. the ones with the holes in it? Yeah. I would have sworn nobody would wear them. But yeah, everybody was wearing them. <laughs> yeah. Them disgusting alien looking ones. <laughs> and yeah. people swear blind that they're nice. <gasps> I see they're horrible the shoes. Yeah, people love them. Yeah. And it's even it's just like people can force them on you because you, you keep going there and no one's there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> 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 I did that twice? All right, it's better. <laughs> Now I'm saying people can force them on you because even now I suppose I can see them where I can see like a girl put them together and it's it's, it's acceptable to me if that mm. makes sense. I'm like okay, whatever. Mm. Oh, but this, but it's like they're still. I just don't. Why it's... is it acceptable when a girl but not a guy? What? Why is it acceptable when a girl wears it and not a guy? Yeah, I don't know. I deal with well, gee, I don't know. Business. <laughs> 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 business what man do them shoes suck <laughs> <laughs> so when a guy wears it you when a guy wears it you don't like it when they're a girl horrible wears it. shoes but so a girl they, wearing it it's okay a girl could put it to, put them together and I could stomach sure. them okay why because girl is better than man okay <laughs> 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 just trying to get to the bottom of it they get a pass you see yeah, yeah. They, they're just cute yeah, because they're cute, attractive in that. So yeah. if you could put together a nice outfit, then... That's about the Sometimes I think that stems from the idea that men can't dress as expressively as women and they get a bit, like, told off of mm. doing something that's different because the idea of being, like, a man is being very basic and just being very, like, great mm. and black. I never like... would have thought I would see Margs in place. Oh, really? Oh, this is. is controversial for him. <laughs> oh, <cool. laughs> look, 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 he's got his leg as well, look. I yeah, see, oh. I could have seen that though. That's it. 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 That's it.
people have strong opinions about mm-hmm. certain aesthetics. Yeah. But I think, yeah, that does play a role. And like I said, if I know someone's gonna, if I'm in a room and I want to win people over and have something I'm wearing, they'll like it. And then consequently, they'll like me. Yeah, I'm going to do that. However, I think we should maybe a bit more so think more about our personal opinions and how we feel about something. I think that should hold a bit more weight Mm-hmm. than it's doing currently yeah. um so i don't know if i kind of dodged that question but i think yeah that's just how I, I feel i think it should be more we should think about fashion a bit more personally so you're trying to say everybody can dress basically that's not true I some people well, can't dress but that's subjective yeah but some people can't dress some people dressing according to what styles. though because one style in london could be seen as like bad and then you put that same style in like i don't know Mm-hmm. I don't know China, and then it's seen as like, oh, it's it. So I think you're yeah, what you, you're saying you'd is have, so you'd have to You'd have to move to China. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, right I there. guess you're trying to say In like we have London, social norms. Yeah, uh, everybody's got everybody's got different 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 styles and stuff like that. But you can even still tell the difference between how people put their stuff together. Like yeah. just being different and just being quirky. Mm. doesn't mean you, it's not enough like you know what I'm trying to say like it doesn't mean it's yeah. good and even this, obviously it's all subjective I get that but just some people just think that just because they're just so different mm. and so think that that means it's good and it's like no mm-hmm. that's that's not really the case yeah but and that's sometimes good according to I could see someone who would wear something yeah. that I wouldn't be caught dead in mm-hmm. but I could see yeah it's put for you've put this outfit together and you it works for thought. you you're, you're like you're confident enough to wear it you're brave enough you like clearly like how you look yeah. it's put together I, I wouldn't do it yeah. but I could see what you've done here yeah. cool but then there's some people it's like nah you look like a fucking <laughs> idiot mate like <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say it's not regardless of whether this is my style or not yeah. you don't look good and I know you're going to say it's obviously subjective who are you to say it is because there's like. going to be someone no, but, but that I've says got, like, I a like baseline it. taste. my taste in everything is usually good <laughs> you can't say that objectively. That's not an objective opinion. This, no. <laughs> it's not, no, it's not. I could, for you to say something that's like terrible, I could probably find 10 people that says it's avant garde and it's like the new wave in fashion. Yeah, but that doesn't mean anything. They're, it means something to them. Yeah, but they're psychos. Okay. Do you know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> like anyone could be crazy. If I'm, just because you, you could find 10 people that's going to tell me that this is good, yeah. and it doesn't, there's 10. It's the outliers. Like, they're 10 psychopaths. <laughs> Obviously, they was going <laughs> to f- agree with you. <laughs> Like-minded twits. Yeah. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? That's to me. I think we should start thinking of fashion more as art. And mm. I feel like if you go to a gallery, there's going to be a piece that moves me that you're just going to walk past. Mm. And I think it's the same thing with fashion. Like, And I feel like even the fact that fashion or style will cause a conversation, whether that's a, like a negative response from you or like a positive one, I think that's mm. something that's powerful because if we're thinking of what fashion is, is its core, it is a part of nonverbal communication. Mm. Um, and I think... Yeah, whatever reaction you get from it, What's it's this something great. What's oh, that's Donny with the pink flowers. What's his My name again? To put it up. Yeah, I asked, I asked Ben to put this up because I wanted to get your impression of like, like his his fashion sense. What does that tell you? What do you get from this? Wait, I need to get my glasses. I'm all okay. Sorry, I can't see you. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? It's a friend of ours. Yeah, it's a friend. He's been on the show as well. Um, oh, but yeah. Good. He's very, I guess, flamboyant, flamboyant, and elaborate yeah. with his expression when it comes to his fashion. Mm-hmm. He's so. a poet. He's an, uh, an author. He's quite a few different things. He's mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He so. said that sometimes, oh, no, even with the way that he dresses, people question his sexuality. Yeah, I can see that. Because yeah, we, again, well, we live in this patriarchal society, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like I said, people feel like men can only dress a certain way, and it's interesting because a study came out in Japan. And it was testing how men um, are perceived or how they feel about themselves when they're wearing pink versus when they're not. Mm. And it found that only men who have this kind of negative relationship with their self-esteem feel like their masculinity is impacted when they're wearing pink. I look good in in pink. I used to wear pink, yeah. I look good in pink, man. It it makes me... Brings out my eyes. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I love that. Wait, what was the question? Like, what, what do you get from him? 
like from his fashion sense. Can you give us some more variations, bro? Yeah. Who else? Yes, I can. What sort of personality is he like? But this you know is the thing again. Like then, then it's leaning again to the idea of like a fashion like psychic. Like that's not <laughs> like <laughs> what I say is going to be different to what someone else says. Like this mm. is some that that is a style that I'm drawn to. I yeah. think it's quite like similar to my own in terms of like the color and being expressive. And I can tell you how you would feel when you're wearing that. Like being able to be so. Um, Varied Oi. in your style. <laughs> could your, could your, if your boyfriend was one of these, would you be calm? Like every every day you went outside, he's making a scene. Like. <laughs> <laughs> making a scene. I welcome that. I like sun, that. Man. No, I'm not saying that. I wasn't a negative. I was just asking a question. I'm okay, saying would you that... wouldn't wear that. You wouldn't wear that like that. Would you wear that? That's not. There's nothing wrong with that setup. There it looks all right. It was pretty cool. To be fair, I like the colors. Um, I like the jacket. The jacket yeah. was cold. I could definitely wear yeah. that jacket still. I don't know if I'd wear that. But hat, yeah, but what stops you guys from like buying things like that? Mm. Money, to be honest. Oh yeah, <laughs> money. Yeah, it's like plain black. It's very easy. <laughs> I wear bright colors all the time. I have never seen you in black colors. In bright colors. I've where where would you see me? On, on when I'm scrolling, I did a little scroll. Yeah, I didn't right. see. <laughs> I've never seen I've you. Not seen You've never seen me in bright colors. Been very exactly like or stru- right anything now. structured. Um, I could find loads of examples of me in bright colors. Every us. single time I watch so him, the every single time I watch him too, I don't yeah. see structure also. So yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, here yeah. with you. I'm here with you. There's no structure to anything he is. Yeah. <laughs> Look at he's got to be here all day. I'm trying to find me in a bright color. <laughs> bright you, color and structure, not like a taxi or something. Black. <laughs> blue. Great. Again, I just yeah, I think it's I feel a bit sad for guys sometimes. I yeah. feel like you feel so like you see again like this guy, you're saying that he gets comments and I think that's something that maybe men feel like they just can't be bothered to field and they'll just dress in a way that again is like a social norm. I think men are see, even there's more... me in a bright jumper. That looks like it was from like you know twenty twelve or something. <laughs> this is May twenty first, twenty twenty three. That's last yeah. year. Nothing that's, structured though. That's bright. What does structures mean? Like a jacket or like a shirt or like jeans. I'm not going to wear bright colored jeans. Why not? Bright colored jeans. Why not? This is the thing. Yeah, why not? Why, why not? do you have such a visual reaction to why color? Why on earth would I wear colored, bright colored jeans? Black's the right question. Black good. or denim. Unless I'm going to all white Again, parties. that's just wear, so sad. It's just so restrictive. And like, you don't know how you might feel when wearing it or the responses you might get. I know exactly how. Why? What? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want the responses. <laughs> what kind of? What kind of? What kind of jeans do you think I should be going for? Any color. Bright purple. Yeah. Orange. Navy. Yeah. Purple. Green. Not in jeans. It's the wrong material. What about like acid wash green? What jeans? Denim. Yeah, yeah, I could do that. Like a jacket or something. Yeah. I'll do that in a jeans jacket or something. Okay. Yeah, Mark's gonna hire me to be a stylist. Yeah, I reckon anything. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna style you. Yeah. Anything you look to basically put on him, I think it would work. And I think he'd be like, "Wow, okay, all right." I love that. I do. I try to do that. I try to challenge people, mm. and they was like, "No, no, no!" And then they wear it, and they're like, "Oh, oh my mm. god, I'd never wear this." And that's the comment I get a lot from my book. Like, I'm wearing this now. I'm wearing that because I read your book, and I felt like. I couldn't or you know like the person that should be wearing this like I'm not them Mm. and I think people just put themselves so much in a box and they think it's money and stuff but it's not I don't think it's money I don't I think it's really just this idea of who you are and you have that very like refined and limited and you're afraid to explore but then when you see someone this is why I mentioned Tom Ford before right do you do you feel like he's afraid to explore I don't think so I think he he dresses the same every day Again, but I think there's a difference between like maybe being afraid to explore. I think he would dress differently, but I think he knows his comfort. Okay. Like I, you don't often see me in black. Like that's not something that mm. I do. I like from time to time, but like where I find most happiness is in like my colors and in like my bright my patterns and like fabrics and things like that. Mm. Um. Like, I think there's a fine line between, like, being like, no, I'll never, I can never, and then being like, no, I actually am just super happy and comfortable in this. I think we should all try to venture out. Um, But I don't even, I think the most person, most people are not super just like, this is me and I'm happy. This is, they're just stuck in what they normally wear rather than being, like, cognizant, like, deciding um, Mm -hmm. that I'm going to dress a certain way. Yeah. 
Makes sense, please. We got a call coming through. Uh, call, call again, call please. Thank you. I just found Tom Ford mm -hmm. in some color. Yeah. I might be the only one on the internet. It, it, well, obviously, he's known for being in, you know, in black all the time, black suits and stuff. So that's why that's why I mentioned him. Mm, yeah. Okay. But yeah. Um. Okay, yeah, the person has a call back. Yeah, call again, person. Thank you. Um, in terms of like, when you're working with these brands and stuff, right? Yeah. And obviously, like like you mentioned before, like seeing the effect of um certain fashion choices on people's psychology and stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you ever find yourself having to take a political stance or a more, a more social aware stance and say, guys, be conscious of the fact that if you do this particular thing, yes, it looks nice, but understand that you're further pushing a stereotype about black people or, or these type of people, for example. And I think this is maybe dangerous or just not a morally good thing to do. Oh, that's a difficult question. I think, like, in my book, I address that there are, like, social constraints to dress in a certain way based on different, like, environments that you're in. Okay. Um, I think, yeah, we need to be, like, cognizant of, like, different people's, like, religions and cultural practices. And whilst that might not jive with, like, how I want to dress, like, I need to be, like, mindful of that when I'm in certain social situations. Like, I always say, like, yeah, you can... I tell people, okay, just how you want, but you need to be mindful. Like, I mm. can't go up. I might feel like the happiest in like a carnival, like outfit, like mm. feathers and everything, but I'm not going to wear that to the office. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm aware of like social rules and social norms. Mm -hmm. um, God, I do think that, uh, you know, clothing is political. You mm -hmm. know, there's been many protests that have been related to clothing. Um, I think her name was Nicola Thorpe. Like she protested government to stop women having to wear heels at work. Um, okay. That used to be like mandatory, like um, officers could like um, make sure that you have to wear heels. And a lot of women were fighting against that. There was the hands off my hijab protest in mm. France where, you know, they were banning women from wearing um, the niqab, especially like young girls mm -hmm. as well. Um, and again, like certain people would say, you know, it's oppressive to dress that's a way, but there's a lots of Muslim women who say that it's a way that they express their faith and their religion. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course the million hoodie march that I mentioned after Trayvon Martin passed, um, and it's weird because this, you know, you see those parade of men like walking in those colorful suits and it's mm. seen as like almost like an act of re political resistance. But mm. what we should be saying is that men should be allowed to dress in the suit and dress in the hoodies and still be seen as like a complex human yeah. um, and not be reduced to like a stereotype. But it's hard because, like I said, we make those snap judgments. But in order to erase those judgments, we need to change what we're seeing. Right. Because all of those judgments are based on these. Um, portrayals that we see in media and popular culture so we need to see more um more examples of people who are dressed in a certain way who are complex characters yeah. um you know maybe women who are wearing the hijab who are not super pious who are like multifaceted or men wearing like black men wearing hoodies who are very docile and like very gentle like we need to be able to see that in order for our um, perceptions to change as well mm. I was going to ask you, yeah, um, do you feel like us being in the West, black people coming over to the UK, America and things of that nature, do you feel like that's kind of affected what we wear? And in what ways would you say it has or hasn't? Black people coming over to the West? Yeah, so, so us basically migrating here, us like, you know, like, mm -hmm. for example, um, the UK during the Windrush ever, right? Yeah. I guess our lifestyles would have been different back home, mm -hmm. right, in Africa and the Caribbean. Yeah. Do you feel like being here that's like whether it be climate, whether it be um, finances, all of these okay. type of things has yeah, affected yeah, yeah. the way we are. And you feel like it's done so in a negative way? I don't think so. I think okay. we've carried that sense of style with us. So I was invited to um, the screening of Garms, which is a great documentary. I think it came out last week, Wednesday on Channel 5. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. I it's have, like, yeah. yeah, the documentary um, that was showcasing black British style through the okay. years. And there was a section in the documentary when they were talking about in the Windrush generation, how all of our, um, all of like the black people that came over were dressed to the nines. Like mm -hmm. they never had a hair out of place. Like every day was like they were going to church on Sunday. And I think that is something that has still remained with us like as a culture is that we take pride in like how we're dressing and we understand that it's not just 
you know, a way to just, you know, roll out of bed and throw something on. It's like more of a celebration of our identity, yeah. like overall. Um, I think that's something that from like from hair to like shoes to like clothes, I think that's something that is very like prevalent for us. And I think we see that across the diaspora. Um, and I think it's a celebration of our culture. So, yeah, I don't think it's negatively impacted. I think it's just obviously there's there's more of a nuance. But when you see like these um, black designers, um, like, you know, like Hanifa and, you know, Fun Me the Label and Bio, like all of these amazing designers, they have been able to merge both of the both worlds, mm -hmm. like having that like bright colorful Rendell, I love Rendell Lagos. Like they're able to muse like their aesthetics from our like cultural background with maybe more westernized things to create that best of both worlds. And I think I think that's a beautiful thing. Um, can you speak to us a bit more about um, Big Dress Energy? Please? Yes, so Big Dress Energy. It's where my. Where Pardon? do you heal from? Where do you heal from? Sorry. Oh, where do I heal from? Yeah. Oh, um, my mother is from Trinidad and my dad's Jamaican. Okay, yeah, so I'm a Caribbean girl. Um, so Big Dress Energy, my baby. So I was just finishing uni writing my blog mm -hmm. all about fashion psychology and I was had a vision to climb the corporate ladder in fashion so I was like I'm going to do marketing fashion um, psychology lends itself to consumer behavior so I'm just going to do that um, I worked at small like lots of different smaller brands and worked at Swatch I was just doing bits and pieces here and there and then um, I got a DM from a literary agent and she was like, oh, have you ever thought about writing a book? And I was like, no, I don't know about that. And she said, yeah, I think you could write a book. Um, so I, I just did it. I wrote it and the first version was so trash. It was boring. It read like a textbook. Like it was so boring. Um, she was like, yeah, this isn't it. This isn't it. Try again. And it took me a long time to figure out who I was writing for. Yeah. Um, and I was working at an influencer tech company at the time and I got furloughed in 2020 and that's the only time in my life I've ever just had nothing to do like I literally just paused and I just was fine watching a lot of reality tv and I was just <laughs> writing writing and realizing that I can put myself into this like I don't have to be like Shkela the academic psychologist like mm. I can be fun like I can write in a way that I'm talking to my friends yeah. and I finally found that voice and I sent it to my agent she was like oh thank god like finally you have it switched it out to publishers and one of them got back and was like yeah we really like this you have six months I was like what do you mean six months they're like yeah you have six months so I quit my job I oh, quit my sick. job and I was like yeah I'm just gonna do this full time oh, and oh. yeah and then Big Dress Energy was born I can't take credit for the title my my editor came <laughs> up with that I was yeah the titles I came up with was terrible but yeah she called me in Tesco one time and she was like Big Dress Energy and I said that that is That's it that is it and um yeah, and the rest is history. What were the ones that didn't make it? Oh my god! Um, <laughs> one of the ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of the titles were really bad. I think it was like "You Are What You Wear." I felt that was dated. Um, one of the someone kept suggesting um, "New Clothes Who This," and I was like, mm, I think that just puts me in a bit of a mm. black category, and it mm. just makes me realize that. I whilst I am black and I get that across and I have slang in the book it's I don't want to be exclusive and I don't yeah. want to put myself in a box um and it was just some other dead titles that just yeah didn't make sense but yeah I'm glad we landed on that first reaction to what she just said Emmanuel about being black and she didn't want to come across like that I mean, I, I I can understand it because mm -hmm. um it just it, it takes me back to like um during the Harlem uh, Renaissance where you had people different types of poets and, and creatives who were saying, you know what, yes, I am a black man or black woman, yeah. but I, am, I I just want to be known as a poet, for example. Don't call me a black poet because it kind of confines me. Mm -hmm. So I understand the argument, but I feel like at the same time, what people like Langston Hughes back then were saying is being black is, is a political thing too. And I want to put that at the forefront so that yes, I'm, I'm recognized as a poet, but don't yeah. take it away from the fact that I'm black because of what... Yeah. Because of how, I guess, black people are seen in society. Mm -hmm. So I guess, yeah, so, so I understand it. I understand yeah. it, so. I guess, yeah, that's why there's balance in there. So yeah. New Clothes Who This is a chapter title mm. instead of the main title. The thing, yeah. I have slang. I talk about whining. I talk about my Trini heritage. Mm. I talk about, like, and there's there was points my editor was like, oh, can we change this? Like, I don't think people will get it. And I was like, they can, like, figure it out. Like, I'm not going <laughs> to, mm -hmm. I'm not going to change my language um, too much. Um, and then, yeah, I realized that 
a lot of people got it and I have like I have a big like middle-aged white woman audience like they really they go hard for me this for me um but I've never shied away from my blackness and I talk about like you know my journey with black clothes matter and how that propelled me into this industry um and yeah I've never shied away from that so yeah I definitely think that um I'm proud of that and I have that in but again I didn't want to just think that my voice can only be in one group like my yeah. voice is I want my voice to reach as many people um mm -hmm. and I feel like people have worked so hard in our in history to be able to give me this opportunity to reach as many people so I'm mm -hmm. going to take that do you lean more into your Trinidadian side than your Jamaican side yeah how do you know that <laughs> just mentioned that just i do i do i love i love Trini. i um my my mother's family is from Trinidad. um yeah. my dad goes back to jamaica and he stays in sandals resorts like he's just so not connected to his drink and everything oh, like that yeah but when i go back to Trinidad, i stay with my family um and um i go to all the different houses i'm a soca junkie like i just love it yeah. <laughs> I wish I could. I go back from time to time. I was there like for a month last mm. year, just working, and yeah, God bless from at work. But um, yeah, I love Trinidad. So it makes a lot of sense, uh, seeing as you're um, Caribbean, because um, your expression is literally our culture. Oh, do you think? Yes. <laughs> I've not been told that before. Serious? Yeah. You're Trinidad, right? Huh? You've been to Trinidad, right? Yeah, I just said I was there last year for like All a month. the time, right? Yeah. Hella color. Yeah. So what I said is correct then. True. Yeah. <laughs> right? True. Yeah. I think because my family just tease me and they call me Hinglish all the time. So ah, I'm like, okay. oh, they're like, stop begging it. But yeah, Fair I'm going to tell them that you said that. Fair Thank enough. you. No, no, no. You're representing well. Yeah. There's another um, uh, Jamaican Trinidadian in the chat, right? Okay. But she's never been to Trinidad. Yeah. Yes, and I mm -hmm. like to tease her for now and again. Yeah. So this is another opportunity, basically. That's so what I'm saying. What I'm saying. Go but it's good Trinidad. that you don't lean to Jamaica. Yeah. Trinidad is the dominant. Um, <laughs> it's your magazine, yes? All right, then. <laughs> I love Trini Keller, man. <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> um, obviously, uh, you know, I'll, I'll get into that question after. Mm -hmm. What is fashion therapy? Fashion therapy, or I guess I call it therapy. Okay. Um, so I kind of coined that term. And it's basically understanding that clothes have the power to help you honor your mood or shift it as well um i think that's something that we experience regularly without knowing it like mm. when you're wearing like a new like nice outfit and you know you get that boost and you just have a little more pep in your step mm -hmm. and you just feel like yeah i'm a boss and you, it changes the way you enter someplace i think that's that's where a p and then when you're like maybe sad or you don't want to talk to anyone and you're put on like a massive maybe oversized hoodie sunglasses like headphones like it's almost like your kind of social distance outfits like mm. i think that's helping you to honor that mood that you're in um so i think it's just about yeah using clothes to reflect who you are or like push you into a different state like sometimes you can be maybe feeling down but you need to pep yourself up yeah. so you'll wear clothes to help you do that um so it's just about the relationship between clothing and emotions if if you was not you personally, but if someone is feeling down and they wanted to, like you said, honor that mood, what's the benefit of doing that? I think sometimes it helps you to process it. Okay. I think sometimes when we're feeling something and we shut it out, then it's almost like we're repressing that emotion. And then I think that can be quite negative because then it can just manifest in different ways. Yeah. Um, so sometimes it's just about feeling your feelings, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think we should always try to be happy. Then that gets into the kind of toxic positivity. And I think that's just <laughs> that's just negative. Like we're humans, you know, yeah. we have those bad days. So I think using your clothes to help you embrace that is just going to be it's going to be beneficial for you. Mm. Do you do TV and stuff? I was looking yes. for your profile. I think I, I see on like loose women and thing. Yeah, not loose women. Um, I have <laughs> <laughs> this morning. Why is that funny? Sorry. Yeah, I've done this morning. <laughs> um, I've done this morning twice. I've done the rain, and then I just did Fox News right. Five in New York. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. I was just there for Fashion Week, and I did the segment, and that was yeah, that was really fun. I was talking is about Fashion Week trends. Is that like a regular segment on this morning, or is that they just call you up sometimes for? Yeah, they call me up sometimes, but I'm hoping to make it a bit more regular. 
um, I love TV. Something about just when the camera comes on. Honestly, when I was younger, I was like, I want to be like Black Gok Wan. Like, that's mm. what I want to like get to. Okay. And then I feel like there was a, a Gok Wan came like bang. And then there was a massive gap. It was like Trini Susanna, Gok Wan, and then like nothing for a long time. Mm. So I really want to, I want to feel that. So what are you doing on there? Putting together pieces or doing psychology? Both. So um, they'll come to me and be like, yeah, we want to have you on. What do you want to talk about? And then I'll say like, OK, there's this research that came out. So I think the first time I was talking about like dressing for success and like different research into how to dress in a way that, you know, puts you in a different mind frame or gives off a different impression. And then they just put me in the fashion cupboard and they're like, right, just like throw some clothes together. That was really scary. Styling on the spot like that with like four like different women, different body shapes. So that was really a great experience. And then the second time I came on, I was talking about color psychology. And again, we was just pulling different pieces on the models, getting to see how they liked it. And yeah, and then you have to talk about obviously my research, but then you have to make sure you mention the, the brands and how mm -hmm. much it costs and do like the takeaways and the BTs. And like, yeah, it's a lot going going on you have to listen to your ear but also listen to the host in front mm -hmm. of you like i think people don't realize how hard live tv is yeah. um but Dermot and like holly were like so nice and allison as well like they make you feel at home like the people in the itv are, are really really lovely um so that was easy and same when i did fox news like the hosts were just lovely i feel like everyone's so interested in fashion psychology yeah. so I always mm -hmm. get that kind of positive response um and yeah, I just love TV. So I'm always just happy. I'm just always like happy to be there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. We've got a question from someone in the chat. It says, by any chance, would you be able to explain the Twitter discourse with Hanifa and Fashionova? I don't know if that means anything Oh, to you. yeah. Oh, yeah. I kind of went viral for talking about that. So basically, um, Fashionova, you know, Fashionova, fast fashion brand, they are known for stealing from creators. They just steal, steal, steal poor labor practices. I don't know why people are still buying from Fashion Nova. And I guess this is the question, right? So um, it was found that um, Fashion Nova had ripped off from Hanifa, who is a small like black luxury or like I would say maybe premium designer. Um, she blew like during the pandemic. And I think she's one of like the few like black luxury designers that are accessible, but also just like amazing quality. Um, just great practices and yeah and I said that you know people shouldn't be like buying dupes I think it's okay. just a disrespect to not only like the culture but like the designer you're like actively saying that you don't care about I think people who are struggling because if you care about especially like ethnic minorities you say you care about women the people who are most impacted by like fast fashion are garment workers mm -hmm. they are mm -hmm. black and brown women um i think the average garment worker in like these fast fashion companies like these super fast fashion companies they make like 200 dollars a month or something like that and then again to steal the creative output of a designer who probably worked so hard to get there already facing the challenges of being a woman being black um i think to knowingly do that is is bad and i think it's the idea that people just think if they see something and it's not within their reach they should be able to get it mm. and i just hate that idea because like number one there are so many clothes in the world like you don't have to just like be stuck on that one style if something is out of your reach it doesn't mean it's like exclusive or doesn't mean that it's like wrong like do you know what i mean i think people think that everything has to be accessible these days like yeah. But you wouldn't say that for like something that's Gucci or something that's Louis Vuitton. If that's price, it's like, exactly. oh, it's like okay, that's fine. But because it's a small black designer, that shouldn't be 300 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, and I think people always say like, oh, price. So you guys said over price, price, price. Do you know the stats came out about um, how much people spend on Fashion Nova and like Shein and Pretty Little Thing? People are spending thousands of pounds yeah, a yeah. year. They're not realizing it because it's like it 30 pounds here, 40 pounds yeah. there. No, it adds up. If you mm -hmm. just stopped buying all of these clothes, you could save that money and get a few really nice quality things that will last you, that is made ethically and will look better. Yeah. Um, and that you can rent out, that's money. You could resell them, that's money too. But people don't see that money aspect of it because mm -hmm. they just want to get that instant gratification. They want to jump on a trend. They want to wear what the celebs are wearing and not even realizing the subs aren't even buying those things or getting them. They're getting it loaned to them as well. So you're going, you're getting into debt for drip. You mm. don't know all of the clothes that you have in your wardrobe, do you? Like, can you see in your mind's eye? Yeah. Everything, every single piece, even the pieces that you've had for years. Yeah, because I rotate regularly. 
So if I've had my wardrobe in a certain way and I find myself when wearing maybe certain clothes, I'll swap it around. So I get use out of my wardrobe. Um, and doing that regularly stops you from being like, oh, I have nothing because you're like, oh, this mm-hmm. top. And I think a lot of people get into that position where they keep buying the same things because they're not realizing they already have it. That's happened to me once. And I bought like two white shirts and I already had one. Um, but I think we need to have a better relationship with the way we store clothes as well. Um, on my podcast, so <clears throat> Big Just Energy has its own podcast. I had this organizer on there. Her name is Sophie Liard. And she said that it's not that you don't have any space. It's that you've disrespected your space by stuffing it with clothes. Mm. And that spun me. I was like, wow, let me let me sort this out. And I think I kind of slowed down on my buying. I really like things that I wasn't wearing in a long time. I took it to the dry cleaners. I got it tailored so I can wear it. And then, yeah, I just constantly try to revamp or like switch things around. Um, so I wear, I try to wear most of it because I think there's studies that said that people only wear like 20% of their wardrobe. Would yeah. you guys say that's true for you? I think so. Yeah, mm-hmm. I wear the same yeah. things all the time. I've got clothes probably less. in mm-hmm. places that I haven't looked in mm-hmm. months. Yeah. And it'd probably be the same thing if I go there, I'd be like, oh shit, this top, yeah. mm-hmm. that thing. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Need to have a swap out. Do the same with the trainers. Mm. I've always got just the same trainers at the front of the door. Yeah, all that ones exactly. are in the cupboard. Exactly, I need to, if, yeah. I don't, if I don't swap them out, I'm going to be wearing the same joints all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we should. We should all be rotating and making the most. Because you think you bought that, right? It's an investment. So mm. get the most out of it. Um, but we're lazy. So mm. you don't mind that you are wearing the same clothes like in the span of two years, you might wear the same clothes like five times. Because you, <coughs> you're about places, right? You, Look on my Instagram. You will see I know what you put repeated, on repeated, repeated, repeated. Oh, yeah, so but do. Oh, yeah. All you'll right. see repeated like outfits talk on that. my... Talk, yeah. talk about the value in that. Because <coughs> um, some women and some men seem to think they could only wear Oh, a lot of people tell what's... me that. Friends tell me that. Crazy. Friends who have like... 10 Instagram followers, they'll be like, oh, I can't, I posted that. I'm like, who are you? Like, I'm sorry, but who are you? Like, if you've bought something, that's your money. Like, I think this is what I'm saying, that people don't see their clothes as an investment and they don't see their clothes beyond that one style. So, for example, like this outfit, like you can wear that in so many different ways. Like this track, so you can wear that in so many different ways. I haven't seen one repeat outfit from you, by the way. There is. uh, (laughs) Yes, there is. I've just styled it in different ways. Stop Mm -hmm. lying. You can see it. Everybody, I'm chatting. Since everyone to look now, you'll see repeated outfits. She just lied to us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Every there square are, is a different. Oh, <laughs> oh. There are repeated outfits. Um, so I think people don't. Yeah, they don't see an outfit beyond how it's put on their website or how it's like on the mannequin or it's being laid out or how they wore oh. it in their head. Are you seeing it now? No, you dance here. Yeah. Talk to me about. <laughs> Talk to me about talk to me about dancing. Oh, she got the, the knees too. She got the knees. She got the <laughs> knees. She got the <laughs> make knees, boy. She is going for it. I love to dance. Fully so. soaked up. All right, then. Yeah, I'm a trainee, and I <laughs> used to love to dance when I was a child um, at school. And I think before when I was 29, I was like, before I turn 30, I need to get back my hobbies because mm. fashion psychology and my blog, it was my hobby. And then it turned into my work. Mm. And I was like, yeah, I can't be living like loving and like living everything that I'm working towards and the things that make me money. I wanted to have something that was separate for that. And I think that's really important for people to have a life that's like filled with things that's not necessarily monetized. So Mm. yeah, I think last year I decided to get back into dance. I did heels, I did Vogue, I did pole. Pole, Mm. pole should be in the Olympics. (laughs) I think people underestimate how hard pole is. Like honestly, like Charlotte Kletchy and like them girls, like my abs, mm, my I had six pack by the end of that course. My legs were battered. Like I looked like I was getting beaten. Like, I had to stop. Like it was too hard. It was too hard. Honestly, shout out anybody that does pole. Um, but yeah, dance is such an amazing way to work out. I yeah, I go classes when I can, but I'm a dancer. Yeah, I wanted to be a video vixen when I grew up. My mom beat that out of me. <laughs> so, yeah. I saw Uchi Wally and I was like, that's I want to be me. I used to tell, used to tell my mom that wants to be me. She'd be like, Shakayla, like, cut it out. Yeah, that was um, but yeah, that would, if I wasn't doing this, I think I'd be doing that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Interesting. This is their respected there. <laughs> respect them. They're athletes. Love mm. this. Um... I want to ask you a question, yeah. Mm-hmm. Obviously, um, I, you're not saying, you know, fashion therapy or therapy yeah. is a fix for 
like social issues like no. crazy, yeah. But do you feel like it does have a role in addressing body image, self esteem, yeah. mm -hmm. colorism, things like that? Um, colorism, I don't know about colorism. I mm. think body image definitely. Okay. Um, I talk about that in my book. Um, because I, I hate those ads where it talks about body image, loving your body, and like the women and the men, um, and the days and the limbs, they're just like naked or they're wearing like underwear. Mm -hmm. And I think that's not true as to how we experience our bodies every day. Like nobody goes out in their underwear. Your idea and your opinions about your body changes depending on what you're wearing mm. so like if you you have like an ab like six packs and you're shirtless you're gonna feel mm. and you're getting confidence you're gonna feel better about your body versus when maybe you're bundled up or like depending on how you feel about your body whether you're wearing something tight or something loose is gonna depend, mm. depend on how you feel about your body image as well and I think in that respect then again clothing can be a tool to help shift our body image so you can decide like I'm not feeling great about my stomach right now. Like, it's just not for me. So I'm going to mm. show it in a way that makes me feel better. I'm going to wear something. I'm going to wear Spanx or I'm going to wear something big to cover it up. Or I, I'm happy with it. So I'm going to show it off. Like, I think mm -hmm. that gives you power in a sense over your body. Um, and it allows you to show how you are presenting yourself to the world. And again, mm. like that gives you a sense of control. Um, that I think sometimes we lose when we see these images of certain women and certain body types and, you know, beauty ideals change like mm -hmm. over time. And I think it allows you to kind of go with how you're feeling at that moment. So I don't like like body positivity. I like body neutrality. Like I'm not yeah. always going to like every part of my body, okay. but I can use my clothes to help me showcase parts that I like and conceal parts that I don't. And yeah. they could, that changes from time to time. And my wardrobe allows me to move with that feeling. That's very um, interesting. And I'm glad you elaborated on that because in my head, I just felt like, what if somebody says to you, but isn't that just covering up something that you're not happy about and not dealing with the actual issue? Yeah. But obviously what you're saying makes sense because I guess it's just different ways of it's dealing different. with it. Yeah. And I think it's important to understand like everyone is different. Like, mm -hmm. I can say I'm going to wear the tightest dress and that's going to make me feel good about my body. But then yeah. other women will feel like that's just presenting their body to be judged and they hate that. So that's why I said it's so personal. Um, that's why I think like styling as well. It shouldn't be like you wear this, you wear this. We wear, like it's not that. It's very like depending on how that person feels. Um, and I think in that sense, then you're going to get the benefits out of it if you're really doing your, your due diligence and you're thinking about like how you feel about your body. Um and being like respectful of your feelings. So with your body composition over the years, it's pretty much stayed the same? Me? Yeah, seeing as you've had clothes from what, yeah. five years. I think so. Ago. And I think I need to understand sometimes that that is a, that's a benefit. Like I know women whose bodies have gone through massive changes, like especially like during pregnancy. And it's just not a case where they can keep their clothes for that length of mm. time. But then I also am a strong advocate for the tailor. So... I've like lost weight over the years. I'll go to my dry cleaners. He's taken my clothes in at the waist or like um, if I wanted something to be like a bit more flared, like again, like with times, like I'll get things like taken out, like taken in. And um, and I think that is something like that extra mile. I think that we should all be going towards with our clothes rather than just getting rid of them. Mm. Um, I think sometimes we skip steps. We don't try to see how we can make our clothes work for us a bit. I've seen that a lot with girls, especially with trousers and jeans. They're just like, oh, it doesn't fit like the IG models. Like, yeah, they don't realize the IG models have five clips behind them in that mm. picture that's holding it together. Like you really think all the mm. trousers are made for those like big BBO bones and tiny <laughs> waists. Like, no, if you want, if you have that, but like get your clothes taken in, get it mm. tailored. It's not that expensive. Mags on a first date, how would you style him? Where are we going? Where <laughs> yeah, are we going? Where, what's the scene? Go is on, it activity set, or set serious? It, please, um, Mags, set it. What, the first date? Yeah. I don't know, because it depends what you Give want me to challenge. wear. Hmm? Give her a challenge. What's the environment? What's the environment? And who's, who's the babies? Because does, does it matter who he's actually going to be mm. sitting opposite? Does it matter when you style him? Uh, yeah. Oh, so you need to ask all those questions too? Interesting. I think so. Because I think... Like I said, like people, they like non-conformity. So they like when people are different, but people are so into themselves. I think they don't realize that they just like what is similar to them. Mm. So I think a lot of people like when you match their vibe. 
Yeah. Um, so I think sometimes that's important. Like, you know, when you're going, well, you, you guys don't know. When you go with your girls, it's like, oh, what are we wearing? Are we doing heels? Are we doing this? Because it's people feel more comfortable when they're dressed similarly to others and they feel more connected to that person. So if I'm doing up heels and you're in like trainers, there's already so going to be a bit of friction there, I think anyway. I think many of them do that, but they do it. They find like subtler ways of of going on, of going yeah. about it, if that makes sense. It's not like a whole all excited. Oh, are you wearing kind of thing? Yeah. Like, they they do want to put feelers out. Yeah, yeah like, like you get what I'm trying to say. Yeah. No, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, I'm glad you guys do that. Yeah, yeah. No, they, there's ways to go about it. Like, so, like I don't even know how, but we find ways to yeah. ask about what he's wearing without going. Oh, are you wearing? Yeah. <laughs> and it's nice because yeah, you feel more comfortable when you're mm-hmm. like dressed like that, and I think natural like psych- psychologically you tend to just start dressing similarly to people that you spend a lot of time with anyway mm. um so it just happens over time so yeah there's less like of an issue when it's when you're going out you'll just probably slip into it especially if it's someone you spent a lot of time with all right so i i said does it matter who he's dating right yeah suppose he told you he was da- dating like a, a rumford girl you know the only way is essex type of, uh, okay movie. How would you style him? If he's white as well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much that changes things. And that um, doesn't. Just, just, just I guess it depends detail. if he's being fetishized or not. Probably. Let's say he is. Should he wear clothes like 50 cents? <laughs> 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 if he is and his goal is to be seduced by that type of girl, then I guess, yeah, you'll just probably dress as maybe rude as possible but I think <laughs> I just think guys in general I think on first dates I think they should dress up a bit more like wear some hard soul shoes so like, when you style nice people yeah. is this more of a are you trying to have a conversation with me to try and find out yeah. what my style is and then bring the best out of that or are you looking with your expert opinion and saying nah this is what's going to work for you I think you should just do this no I never would say do this because that's based on my aesthetic um when I am like giving advice or doing like low-key styling it's more like asking the questions and getting me to think and then presenting different styles that you might not have thought of and then gauging your reaction um like I said I think it's just very personal I think how I would style you you might be like what the hell like that's not for me because stylists always want to do that they want to yeah, give you something I don't like, like, that. Like, right <laughs> like did you even read the memo like, yeah. not, like, is it, like I hear where you're coming from but this ain't my story why yeah, would you yeah, even yeah. want me to wear this it is good to <laughs> push yourself slightly outside of your boundaries I do think that's good but I think yeah you don't want to be a completely different person. Yeah. You want to be a different side of you, not like a separate character, if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, so that's how I would approach it. But sometimes you would approach a stylist because their aesthetic is something that you're drawn to and you want to take like embrace that side of yourself, which I can think can be beneficial as well. I like well. taking styles or pieces or things from different demographics, stuff that yeah. I wouldn't wear or like just in the diff- and, then, and bring it to my thing, if that makes sense. I see yeah. people that do totally different things it could be a whole outfit that's just totally different, but there's su- one thing, whether it be like the jacket or the mm. top, or the, there's just something there that's like, ah, oh, mm. yeah, that's that's quite cool. Maybe I could take that, mm-hmm. bring that over here. Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. Revamp it and boom, 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 and that's yeah, yeah. That's I like I like the stuff I like inspiration from different styles. You know what I'm yeah. trying to say, and dressing like different. Like, it's like putting on a um character if that makes yes, sense yes yes mm. like what you're saying brent like there might be days where i might dress like an essex boy mm. like a yeah. white boy and i know that's not anybody who sees me mm-hmm. from you instantly you're gonna just yeah. assume but i'm cosplaying yes mm. yeah, yeah, <laughs> essentially yeah. i think i that. love when people do that and i do that as well like you'll never see like the same person in my wardrobe and i think it's so powerful to do that as well um because then again like i just the idea of just having this uniform style i don't like that i think it's almost like Hang yourself into a cartoon character that just wears the same like clothes every episode. I think mm. we're all so <laughs> nuanced and different. And like you said, like in you, you have like an he turns, boy. He turns like his nose up. That's what Brent does. Oh, oh. What, what are you saying is bad? I don't like the idea talk of having me, a me. signature style. Brent wears the same thing every day. What is yeah. that? My my cupboard. You ask a question about yeah. how much percentage of the I wear hundred percent my cupboard because wear, all it's, the all the same. Same. it's all the same. It's all the same. Do you not find that limiting? No, I don't. The thing is, I have so much expression in me that I don't even see this as a need to express myself. Yeah. 
Talk I to me. That. Talk to me. How would you basically change my mind? Because I don't, I don't yeah. see. It's, it's so convenient. Mm-hmm. Uh, I look good in black. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I, focusing on things to put on is time. I was just going to say that I get get that because I think people that do that, they see fashion as a draw and it's like another decision that you have to make. And I think people who do that, they get decision fatigue mm. where like you get that sense of being overwhelmed by like, oh, another thing I have to choose. So let me make my life easier and take that out. And I think that that makes sense. And I think, yeah, the type of people that do that, yeah, they like things very structured and they get overwhelmed very easily. But then to that point, I would say like, Maybe you are missing out on like. Don't, don't put it on me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe not. But why do you think it's such an extra decision to wear something that's like slightly out of the norm? Then. I don't. I don't. No, I don't even see it as a problem. I don't see this as a conscious effort. I just see it as this makes sense. Mm-hmm. If um, I'm projecting. If I don't feel as though when I'm in mixed company, I'm not seen, I might put on things so that I can be seen clearer, right? Yeah. I'll, I've never had that problem. Yeah. Right? In fact, I don't even want attention drawn to me. Okay. So putting on loud clothes, I am asking for the thing I don't want. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's so interesting. I see that a lot in like people who work in PR or like behind the scenes, they have that uniform um, that helps them to like blend in and it's less like individualizing so it helps them to like be part 100%, of the crowd 100%, this is it. but then I just think I don't know I think there's parts of things that you might be missing out on that you're not aware of I have if gold, you haven't tried gold trim <laughs> yeah okay so, sometimes I have white okay <laughs> right, so, so I think no accessories is a great way to add yeah, yeah. that into your wardrobe I think we attach more meaning to our accessories it's so interesting even though that they might be like mass produced in the same way we somehow think that our like jewelry and our accessories are just like way more meaningful and it adds mm. that special touch and I think people should invest more in accessories actually mm. I think it adds that extra it's like so much more personal and it's almost like a bit of styling and a bit of creativity is that part of your service when it is that you're styling accessories too let me make it clear. I don't like style like regularly mm. like it All would. Right, it's more okay. like if I have a project that I'm doing. Just I have been asked cases. quite a lot. Yeah, I have been asked <laughs> quite oh, a so lot. Oh, so you want to, you see, you see, you see something in me. I love this. <laughs> I love this. I love this. I mean, we have to start somewhere because I get asked all the time. I've been asked by certain people to do it. And I think I would love to. It's just I a lot of my work in like teaching and like content and like with the brands and like the content, like those things I'm doing, it takes up so much of my time. But I definitely think that it just makes sense because I get asked it too much. I'm just thinking of a way to scale it. Mm. I I haven't made any effort in just in the last couple of years. I feel like in the last couple of weeks, I've been my conscious of like, I said, you know what? I'm just gonna go buy some clothes and stuff, and just mm-hmm. and just actually I make an effort to have some type of style because I just don't. I just don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Care for clothes. I just throw on tracksuits every day. If I gotta go somewhere, I'll I'll put something on. But for the most part, I just I just crack on. Yeah. But recently, I've been thinking. I think I'm ready to like switch it up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where to start dressing now? Because usually I don't want to make a scene. You know that's my saying. I don't like making a scene, innit? I don't mm. want to make a scene. I want to give you the rest of you like, a chance to breathe. <laughs> but now I'm just thinking I'm gonna keep my foot on you man's neck. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. I think it's powerful. Do it. But I have mm. a tip before you go shopping. Before okay. anyone goes shopping, I have a tip. It's called my four three two one rule. Okay. Um. So this is a way to make sure you're not buying nonsense things that you're not gonna wear. Things that you're just gonna leave in the back of your cupboard, right? Okay. So four is think of your future self. Every time we think about our future self, we think about like the job, the car, the house, or whatever the person but we don't think about how we look and our aesthetics and I think that's important so picture like that best future version of yourself if the thing you're planning to buy if it doesn't fit in with that image then don't get it if it does then you can move on to three three different occasions that you're going to wear this outfit or three different ways you're going to style it differently if you can't think of that then it's going to be like that one hit wonder you're just going to take the picture and just be done with it so that gives it like insurance that's going to be have that longevity and that versatility to take two deep breaths when we shop i always say shopping is chemical warfare mm. when you're online you have the endless scroll then you go off the app and then you'll get like all of the deals like 10 percent off last chance to buy there's only mm. two left oh mm. it's like this 30 percent deal is like not lasting this voucher is going to get like all of these things it messes with our brain it gives us that boost of adrenaline that dopamine that can 
when you have too much of that, it can squash the areas of your brain that's useful for making decisions and weighing up pros and cons. Yeah. So take two deep breaths, calm down the nervous system. And I would say one, like one good night's sleep. Leave it in your basket, like put the hanger down, like go home and really sleep on it. Because sometimes you wake up and you're like, oh my God, why did I buy that? Mm. Like I spent too much money or I don't really like that. But when you wake up and you're like, no, actually I really like this, I want it. So you've done enough due diligence to realize that mm. it's worth it. And I feel like every time when people do that, they've told me, they have completely like made like so many better choices when it comes to not even their clothes just in general mm. shopping choices um because they stopped and they think and they thought about what they're doing i like so, that man nice four, three, two, that. Four, nice three, two, four, three, two, one. yeah all right cool i've just seen trinidad in such a oh my god <laughs> You're gonna be i have blast. just seen this oh wow and this is true <laughs> 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 i got that I bet you, I bet you yeah, did. A black designer. <laughs> <laughs> bet you Put did. that away. Oh my god. <laughs> this boy sent it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Dumb uh, guy. I thought, I thought he might appreciate it. Oh you know, my god. He's <laughs> very, he's very passionate, passionate about it. Yeah, like, yeah. I thought I thought might galvanize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, galvanize me, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so where can we get mm. this book? Yes. You can get that book at all good bookstores. Okay. Um, Amazon seems to be people's favorite okay. choice. I think it's on discount now. Um, yeah. But yeah, and make sure like you can go on my website, fashionispsychology.com. I have my own online course. I feel like not enough people know about fashion is psychology. The mm. universities that are promoting it are very expensive. So I wanted to make it accessible. So if you want to learn... Um, more in depth like go to fashionispsychology.com fa forward slash courses and of course on Instagram fashion is psychology and my sorry I'm doing my massive plug right now is that the yeah. time yeah my plug is at Shakayla Elise so. dope 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 um, unfortunately we do obviously have to wrap up the interview mm -hmm. but we've always got some last questions for our guests right okay tell us something nobody knows about you mm. what does nobody know I'm so transparent everyone says that but there's some. Um, or maybe just a handful of people know. Maybe a handful of people know. Um, I talk about, I try to be transparent with this. I have a chronic pain condition called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Yeah. So I'm like super flexible, um, super stretchy. I have like no bones in my chin. Oh, might that be something? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Serious? Do you want to touch it? You sat by saying it's a problem. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, no, squeeze it. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> so, hypermobility, um, it causes, like, hyperflexibility. I can, like, do this place, leg of my head. Like, I'm very bendy. And then, yeah, I have stretchy skin and stuff. Um, yeah, so it's good for dancing, but it causes, like... <laughs> It cause there's na negative side effects, so yeah. it's like um, you got any water my... over there, bro? <laughs> <laughs> so um, it does cause like chronic pain and like fatigue. So I'm always managing that. So every time you see me like carnival partying or doing all these yeah. events, like people don't see the side where I'm like in bed with like an yeah. ice pack and struggling. So I wow. always say like you need to be mindful because you don't always know what people go through. But I, I've done. Um, like the work to try to promote my condition a lot more. And mm. I've had so many people being like, oh my God, I can't believe mm. you have that. I have that too. And it's like wow. created that bonding moment. So yeah, I'm a bit transparent about that. And yeah, I guess my my, my stretchy too. <laughs> <People> <laughs> so what, see. What, was you born with it or did it develop? It's a genetic disorder. Um. And it, um, it only developed when I was like nine or so and i was in and out of hospital they thought it was lupus they thought my mom was like giving me munchausen by proxy wow. which is that condition where you make up because yeah. i was just always in pain and then the next day i'd be in pe like come on like in netball like yeah let's mm. have it like, let go and then the next day i'd be like in pain again wow. um and it wasn't until i went to like great ormond street hospital mm -hmm. um so much love for them and then yeah they, i got diagnosed and then it's something that wow. i've been living with since so it's just a lot of like physio yoga mm -hmm. um like managing yeah. like not doing too much which sometimes i'm not very good at doing but um yeah shout out all the chronic pain girlies <laughs> <laughs> wow wow very interesting yeah what would you say is your biggest life lesson um i guess that 
it's going to sound cliche, but like not every day is promised. So another thing that's personal that I talk about is um, I lost my big sister to cancer like six years ago, a couple of weeks wow. ago. Actually, it was six year anniversary. She was yeah. 32. Um, it happened so sudden, like literally raving on New Year's Eve and she passed away in February. Like what? it was like that. And my niece and nephew were two and five at wow. the time. So I became like a mom yeah. at 24, like overnight. And I think going through that made me realize that it's so, it's so ridiculous to be moaning and groaning about just things that we can't control or like the small things. Like mm -hmm. I really, since that I have, I think a lot of people who've gone through grief or something traumatic would tell you that they just don't have tolerance for like moaning yeah. and whining, just yeah. like do it. Like all of my success as well has come after that. Like after mm -hmm. I've had all of those challenges, like, and like trying to raise these kids and trying to figure out myself and like helping my mom who lost her firstborn, like all of these things. And, I just feel like I'm not going to waste time in situations that make me unhappy. Yeah. Like I really don't have tolerance and I don't have tolerance for like a lot of like moaning and grin. Like just like do it, like mm -hmm. get up and do it. Like you can decide to be, ha I feel like people can decide to be happy. They can decide to get themselves out of a rut. They can decide if they're a pessimistic person, you can almost decide to be happier mm. or you can decide to get help or like make an effort or lean into your support system or like, just do something because life is short man i'm turning like 31 this year like when i pass her age it's gonna be wild mm. for me because we were eight years apart wow. um but i just yeah i just get on with it and i just try to be happy and try to smile and have fun because yeah you just never know mm. never know when it could be your time thank you for that man yeah um we typically ask our guests right to leave a question for the next guest Okay. Uh, so we've got... <laughs> the pre <laughs> so um, I'm going to ask you the previous question. Yeah. And also I want you to leave a question for the next person. Okay. Right? So the previous question was, if you had to get rid of one of the hosts... Who oh. Would be? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'm not answering that. There's no way. You guys are like a dynamic force. I'm not going to answer no, that. No, it's just play, play. Come on. Man. No, 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 no. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. X. Whoever answered that is box that is bad mind. No, <laughs> You're not being a good sport. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I am. I am being a good sport. I'm not going to cause division You're within not the group. Division. Oh. We, we don't even care. Oh, you, you, you cannot trick me. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, cool. So what, what would your question be for, for the next person? The question I love to ask everybody is like, why are you wearing this today? Tell us about it. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Nice. I like that. Mm -hmm. All right, man. Thank you very much for joining us, man. Thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure, really man. Really appreciate Thank it, man. You. It's been enjoyable. All right, then. Okay. We're going to our last headlines for the day. Uh, People's Journal. People. Oh, I thought you said you. Yeah, sorry. Let's 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 go to the last headlines. All right, cool. Yeah. All right. I thought you said. Do that after this, Ben. Um, will you stay with us? If you want to, if you've got time, you can stay with us. Well, she didn't I came so far, I might as well get my east out of this location. She didn't ask for the question, so she has to stay. Yeah, that's true. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you're automatically a host now. Oh, wow. Basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those who take okay. part in the host stuff, then cool. I love to go, but. <laughs> okay. Can I get a um, Brent? All right. So, so our, our next um, headline. Oh. Uh, President Volodymyr Zelensky has said on Sunday that 31,000 Ukrainian soldiers had been killed since Russia's full-scale invasion two years ago, given the first official figure for more than a year. Zelensky told a news conference in Kiev that he could not disclose the number of wounded because it would, it would help Russian military planning. But he further stated 31,000 Ukrainian troops have been killed in this war. Not 300,000, not 150,000. Putin is lying there. But ne nevertheless, this is a big loss for us. Battlefield casualties are a highly sensitive subject in a country trying to reform how it mobilizes um, civilians into the army to regenerate its forces after last year's counteroffensive proved unable to break through Russian lines. The Ukrainian leader also said that tens of thousands of civilians had been killed in the occupied areas of the country during the war. Kiev says that it cannot accurately assess the scale of such losses because it does not have access. Our next headline takes us to Haiti, man, where U.S. rice exports 
to Haiti, uh, which account for the bulk of the supplies of the country's key food staple, contain unhealthy levels of arsenic and cadmium. Mm. He- these are heavy metals mm. that, that can increase risks of cancer and heart disease. This is according to a recent study done by the University of Michigan. Haiti is amongst the U- United States' top buyers of rice alongside Mexico and Japan, and cheap imports are more affordable than local options in the Caribbean nation, uh, which, is, by the way, is the poorest state in the Western Hemisphere. According to this study, the average um, arsenic and cadmium concentrations were, were nearly twice as high in imported rice compared to Haitian-grown products, um, with some imported samples exceeding international limits. Imagine, nearly all imported rice sa- samples pardon me, exceeded the U.S. Food and Drug Administration's, the FDA's, recommendations for children's consumption. The former U.S. President Bill Clinton, who helped push subsidies of rice uh, U.S. rice to Haiti later called the move a mistake, saying it had battered local production capacity. And our last headline takes us to um, Tunisia, where a court has sentenced the former president, Mr. Mazouki, to eight years in prison in absentia as part of the country's crackdown on opponents of President Kais Saeed. Um, authorities said that Mr. Mazouki had violated um, laws against assignment and called for the overthrow of the government. He served as the first democratically elected president of Tunisia from 2011 to 2014 after Arab Spring protests led to autocratic President Zeni al bedin Ben Ali to step down and flee the country. Mr. Mazouki had been a vocal critic of Saeed's move to consolidate his own power and revise Tunisia's post-Arab Spring constitution. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. it. Pardon me for the headlines. Time to pay the bills. All right, cool. Let's see if we can motivate you this Monday quickly. Yeah. This is one of their mantras. But who really wants to wake up determined, go to bed satisfied? Wake up determined, go to bed satisfied. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. They say waking up earlier than you'd like has many endless benefits. I'm sure those in the 4am club will love this one, as this is one of their mantras. But who really wants to wake up earlier than you should, when you know it's going to be another routine day in this endless cycle that we're trapped in called life? Monday, you wake up and start the week. Tuesday, you've got energy as you're now accustomed to waking up that little bit earlier. Wednesday, uh, happy hump day. Halfway there, so let's power through. Thursday, all of a sudden, you're super tired and struggling to pull yourself out. Friday, there's a spring in your step and you can't wait for it to all end. If your cycle is anything like this, then trust me, you are not alone. Often we are caught up in the entitlement of waking up to see another day and just getting on with it. But do we ever take the time to appreciate being able to wake up, having a reason to wake up and coming back to rest after all is said and done? Your challenge is to slowly but surely give yourself the determination you need to wake up just that little bit earlier. This could be waking up earlier so you can make it for a gym class or even waking up earlier to just like the show on YouTube and join the ever entertaining chat. Being determined is described as having made a firm decision and being resolved not to change it. So wake up having made a firm decision to get ish done this week and go to bed satisfied knowing that you did it. All right then. Was that music playing in the background of purpose? She wanted a different track. Huh? She wanted a different track. Well, what, what, what vibe was she going for? Motivation. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's not me basically telling her to not like try to fix something that ain't broken in it. A lot. That's not what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> But if it looks like it. But I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. Thanks for those lovely words, man. Let's get into the reaction. All right, then. I haven't watched a football match in that long. I don't know. Arsenal? 
All right. My dad would tell me QPR, but I think that's a bit embarrassing. <laughs> well, welcome to the reaction, people, where I read out your sports headlines. Obviously, we had a cup final on the weekend, and Virgil van Dijk's last ditch extra time header sealed the Carabao Cup win for Liverpool. Well done, Liverpool. Big up them. So, Virgil van Dijk headed a 180th minute winner to seal the Carabao Cup for Liverpool with a 1 0 win over Chelsea. Jurgen Klopp's swung song season was guaranteed the last one piece of silver, a last piece of silverware for the club. Um, but it took a long time to get there in a topsy turvy encounter that somehow stayed goalless for nearly the duration at Wembley. Uh, there were post hit at each end, VAR folds for each team, and a string of chances denied. But with penalties looming, it was Van Dyke who settled it, uh, rising highest to head in from a corner. In uh, t- it is the tenth time Liverpool have won this cup increasing their position as the most successful team in the history of the competition ahead of Man City, who've won it eight times. You catch any of it? Yeah, I watched it. It was a quite a thrilling game. I was yeah. at Box Park getting ready to um, set up and they had the two events on, so they had the, the football on and then I was setting up my one after. Yeah. And it's supposed to finish at a certain time, this yeah. guy had the extra time. I was thinking, yeah. shit, these aren't going to score. I thought it was going to go penalties. Yeah, yeah. So it was really winding me up. But, um, yeah, like, there was chances... Post being hit, goals yeah. disallowed. It was a decent final, wasn't it? Yeah. It was all right. You happy with the result? You don't really, you don't really care, innit? Um, am I happy with the result? <clears throat> I think I know more Liverpool fans than I know Chelsea. So <clears throat> in that sense, yes. So I can celebrate them. Um, but the only Chelsea fan I know is Greek. But he said that he doesn't support Chelsea anymore. Uh. <laughs> yeah. He said he started supporting them when um, Abramovich and Drogba were there. So he's only known glory. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So now don't, he doesn't recognise his club. Don't want to see through the dark days. 100%. So he said he's gone. Okay. He said he supports Arsenal now. Well, speaking of Arsenal, he's a, um, pumped Newcastle by on Saturday night. So it says, Bukaya Saka scored for the fifth game in a row as Arsenal moved to within two points of Premier League leaders Liverpool with a dominant 4-1 win over Newcastle on Saturday night. Transformed from a practice side beaten in Porto on Wednesday night and inspired by winger Saka and Gabriel Martinelli, who had struggled in the Champions League tie, Arsenal were electric from the first whistle. Individually today, we were outstanding, said boss Mikel Arteta um, afterwards. We raised the bar again. They are well coached, um, Newcastle. It's difficult to do what we did today and make them suffer. The home side were deservedly two up inside 24 minutes. Uh, Carry asked a surprise selection in goal for Newcastle with Martin de Bravka ill, had little protection. Um, on his first Premier League appearance in almost six years. He was unable to force away Gabriel's header from a corner, which was knocked into his own goal by Botman and completely exposed when Martinelli cut back for um, Kai Havertz to stroke in the second. The visitors eventually found something of a foothold in the second half, but were swiftly hit by another double blow, with Saka cutting back on his left and cracking in a super strike before Kiria forced home a header from another corner of Lewis Miley, which Carriers could only fumble on its way through. There was a late consolation for the travelling fans to cheer when Joel Willock headed in against his former club with six minutes to play. It was Newcastle's first goal at Arsenal in over nine years, um, but defeat leaves them eighth, 15 points off the top four and 10 points behind fifth place Tottenham. Mm, yeah, that's done. Happy with that? I knew he was going to bat them, I told you. Is that what you said? Yeah, I knew. I knew. I didn't know he was gonna back them, but I knew you'd get it done. I knew you'd get it done. I was hoping you wouldn't, but I knew you'd get it done. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't watch it. Did you watch the United game? Yeah. Yeah, that was a tough watch as well, though, man. Certain one. Yeah, they didn't want to get. They didn't want to start playing until until Fulham scored. Mm. Really. They decided to go for it at the end. They got the equaliser. And I did think they was going to push on and get the winner. But to be fair, they didn't deserve it. They didn't deserve it. We've got a lot of injuries. We've got a lot of injuries. But, um, yeah, I didn't know what he was going to do without Hoyland because obviously he's been in good form and not just scoring. His hold-up play is good. So I was, worried, I was worried about what they're going to do with the striker. Rashford and Garnacho on the left and the right just started clicking and started working. So I was thinking if you change that, what does that look like? He shouldn't change it, but then we ain't really got a nine. I don't know. We put Rashford through the middle, then he put Guy Nacho on the left, and everybody was just out of sorts. Bad decisions, bad performance, man. Tough. 
maybe the um, Red Juggernaut ain't marching on. No, but you're still going to make fourth, right? I don't know after that, you know. All right. After that performance, honestly, I don't know. I'll be so real. These injuries ain't helping us. It's tough out here, man. So, I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, in some other news, sad news, sorry, former Northern Ireland um, Southampton Aston Villa defender dies at 77. So former Northern Ireland Southampton Aston Villa defender Chris Nicol has passed away. The English-born 77-year-old started his career at Burnley, but is best remembered for spells at Aston Villa and Southampton. He was Saints manager for six years and Wolfsall boss from 1994 to 1997. Nichols made an international debut in 1974 and won 51 caps for Northern Ireland. He was part of the Northern Ireland team which reached the World Cup finals in 1982. Mm, sad news there. Um, and in our last headline, we've got... Ah, oh, did I miss that? Clarissa Shields mm-hmm. beats Kesley DeSantis to make history in Saudi Arabia. Did you watch it? No, I didn't watch it, man. Uh, uh, damn. Undisputed boxing world champion Carissa Shields secured her second victory in MMA after a split decision win over uh, Kesley DeSantis in Riyadh. The fight made history as the first professional MMA bout in Saudi Arabia featuring two women. Shields, a free weight world champion in boxing, was visibly emotional when she was confirmed the winner. Uh, there were days in camp where I was literally in tears. I didn't want to go back because it was so hard, she said. The MMA event came 18 months after British fighter Ramia Ali and Dominican Republic's Crystal Garcia Nova became the first female boxers to compete a pro fight in the kingdom. Shields was competing on the undercard of the Professional Fighters League Champion versus Champions event in which Bellator's best compete against the um, PFL's best. Yeah. I didn't know it was MMA. I thought, she, I thought it was a boxing fight. No, no, no. MMA, yeah. But she... Just, she does boxing. She's the one. Is that the one of what was Vanna Marshall, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I missed that. Nothing to talk about that. Nah. Where did this come from? Vidal Riley getting added to the to the um, was, Wal- Woodley was, Cup. That was last um, week. <coughs> you speak about that. I mentioned it. I mentioned it briefly. I don't remember knowing that Vidal was on that card. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was a last minute thing. I think. Yeah. It didn't happen straight away. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah. Wait. Did we speak about it? No, no, yeah, he wasn't there when I when I mentioned it. Okay, I'm still looking forward to that card, bro. Mm-hmm. I can't wait. To get my tickets. The Taylor um, Carroll fight. What happened? That's that's gonna be in April something. April was it twenty something? Sold out in like like ASAP. Like tickets gone completely. What? Do you know what promotion that is? Oh, I think it's Matt. Is it Matt Room? Eddie Hearn's involved, yeah, so I think it is Matt Room. Uh, I ain't got yeah. no pool. Nothing I can do. <laughs> I can't go. But yeah, man, that is the end of our sports news. And the end of our show. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's get into the outro, please. I don't have any... Um, I don't have any done it here, so calling all researchers. I need someone to help me replenish my um, list of options to look at. I'll keep my eyes peeled, my ears and eyes peeled if there's anything going on outside in the streets. There's some stuff that I did hear about, but it's probably more word on the road than done it here, so we'll stay away from that. But thanks for taking part today. Thanks for everybody that got involved in the chat. Nobody called up today, did they? They did, but um, we didn't call back. Call back, man. We like hearing those voices in the morning, man. You know what it is. Um, thank you to our wonderful guest. Mm-hmm. He was amazing. Thanks for taking part. Thanks for having me. Make sure you like the video. Oh, big up Esther. She had to leave early, <laughs> but you know, we love her. <laughs> She's here with us in spirit. You know, make sure you like the video. Make sure you share, you subscribe, you do all of that good stuff. And pull up in the morning. We'll be here, same time, same place. I wonder what we'll be wearing tomorrow. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> I'll be watching. <laughs> <laughs> what feeling is going to be black? No, colour. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. I'll see you later in the morning, guys, man. Peace out. Peace.